Oh man, I love that song. I don't know what it is. That that intro is killer. I found that music. Uh, I don't know when it was, but I was like, man, I got to use it for something. And that's been like the kind of the theme for the Rum and Coke night. Uh, and I use some of the other themes for other things. But uh, I love that song. That song is bitching. Uh, by the way, welcome, everybody. Rum and Coke night. Yeah, we're going to be drinking tonight. Uh, we got a special thing because we actually got real Coke tonight. Not cocaine. Don't get your mind out of the gutter. But like real. <laughs> Landon went out and bought real Coke for this. How do you like that? Wow. This is so, like literally rum and coke, yeah. So so Lane so point tonight. I I it I looked her back, you know, in my my first and so forth, and it's been forty years since I purchased a Coca Cola product, and so I went wow. to the store to buy Coke, and and you just can't buy Coke. You got to buy first of all. There's like seventeen zillion different types of, of Coca Cola as opposed to just Coke. But I figured it had to be like real Coke, even though it's 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 got stuff in it that isn't an original Coke. And and then I wanted to go buy a can. Like, no, you can't buy a can of Coke, right? Because I'm not. So so the best I could do is, is is find this little six pack of these little dinky cans, right? Um, and so that's my my pick for the rum. Um, uh, I got is there a nice Bacardi? Uh, eight year aged rum. So for rum and coke, we have rum and coke. Now the question is, how much rum, how much coke? Uh, it's, I would put what, one and a half ounces of rum to... I, I can answer that. Use the cap on the t If you don't have a measuring glass, use the cap on the top. Put two and a half of those in it. It's, oh. It's like, oh, it's got a cork top. <laughs> All right, what, what do you, what do you, what do you got around you? What kind of glass are you using? Let's take a look. Um, I could use one of these, these guys here. That's a two-point pour. That's like oh, there two, you go. That's, yeah, you, that's yeah. two shots, isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. should be a double yeah, shot. So double fill shot. it up, fill it up just above where the uh, writing is, the top of the writing. Yeah, I do a oh. one point five pour. Right there, yeah, right? Yeah, right at the top of the writing. I don't like strong rum and cokes. Uh, it's not supposed to be a strong. Okay, beer. like 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 this. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. And dump, then, and then top off in. your yeah, and top off your glass with Coke. Yep. Well, I've got a I've got a beer mug. Should I get a smaller glass? Uh, no. Just fill no, it up. No, you're fine. You know, like yeah, just halfway. empty up. Yeah, just empty whatever's left of your Coke. Just fill that up. But these are these little leaky things right there. People actually drink this stuff. Apparently. Yeah, I'm not a big Coke fan. I've got my Johnny Walker Black for tonight though, so. Well, I've got other things. I've, I've got a whole string of other got, things, but I figured, I figured we had to be truth in advertising because you know someone might sue you for dishonesty. <laughs> let's, let's, Sorry. Let's, let's, who else we got in here tonight? Uh, first, let me. Uh, Sorry, my... take uh, take a sip of it and tell me if it's too much. Em, can you hear us? Let me introduce Em real quick because I think she's having a dysphoria of where she's at. Um, em, hello. Hi. I'm um, ah, sorry. Okay. My. Um... My laptop gave up on me. Oh, okay. It just, it just, I think so. It overheated. It was all excited about this meetup, and it just got overheated, and then it just decided to go bing. And yeah, sorry. This, well, this is. I mean, I've been in streams with you on Facebook before, but this is the first time you've been on the Roman Coke. This is your, I don't know your. Yeah. What, what they call it? Your first. Not popping your cherry because. Yeah, but. <sighs> and you, and you, you like to go by by what 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 name do you like to call? Online. So um, my name is Manya, but if, if if you can't remember that, M is Manya. fine. Manya. Manya. Hey, Manya. Yeah. Manya. Well, Manya. 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 I just say M because it's simpler for me because I'm a simple man. So. Oh, Landon, you will love what I'm drinking because it's hilarious. Mm. I made myself a hot chocolate, and mm. I put the red sour note in it, and it tastes like Black Forest cherry cake. Really? Yeah. Woo. Uh, and who else wow. we got? We got Ansgar. Hey, what's uh, up? Dude, it's been forever oh, since I've seen you. I know, I know. Oh it's my been god, like, was it what? been like seven minutes or something? Seven whole minutes. It feels like, I mean, it, it's been forever since I've seen you that know, beautiful, Better than leave me alone cookie. by myself. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure, Asgar. Yeah. And who else do we sneak in? Is that is that who I think is? Did, did Red sneak in? Or is that just his logo that somebody's using? It looks like it's Red's. 
Is there a Reds logo? I don't see it. You don't see Reds? I see it on the stream. Yeah. Oh, is it red? Is it Reds rhetoric? <laughs> hey, go suck a dick. Okay, um, what are you drinking? <laughs> well, well, a well, actually, Steve, I I'm here because I want to bitch you out for a bit. I want to introduce oh. somebody else first, and then we can save your your hostilities for afterwards. We, I, I, I traveled all that way. You said that we were going to have a night alone, and now all these people are watching. Am I going to have to perform? <laughs> I, I said we have audience? a night alone, but I didn't hey, say man. that it was going to be recorded. I was just here to hold the camera. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I need a cameraman. I need a grip. I need a producer. I, I have, need makeup. Well, what kind of camera I, I had, you have? I had I the invited. handcuffs. I had the harness. Em's, Em's going, what the? Em, see, Ooh, nice. Em doesn't know what she's in for because usually we're having philosophical discussions on Facebook. And I, so she just like, <laughs> no, what the hell is going on? If it makes you feel any better, I wasn't invited. I just showed up. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out who the hell she is because she didn't introduce herself. <laughs> yeah, and nobody introduced her. Is I think it's Chesh. Is that what it is? Chesh. Uh, new Not Skype who this? <laughs> new Skype. It's always it's always a pleasure. You get you get the you know it's always a pleasure to have you around. We love you, Chesh. Not as much as you, Landon. Oh. I, Ch <laughs> Chesh, you want to plug something real quick before we get back to Res? And by the way, um, Misha says that Red needs a fluffer. I agree with her. <laughs> Doctor. By the way, Doctor, I did I did send you a link if you look in your DMs. I'm in. Bish, oh. Bish, we got Bish, we got swag. Ooh. We got all kinds of swag. I'm so who made the swag? Excited. Who made the swag? It was it was you. She made the swag. She made all the I swag. Make all the, I make all the swag. So we got we got smugs that are now available. So if you want a mug with Steve's face on it that you can mix your drinks in, and you can. I'm get using them a subway the class because I'm gonna I'm getting a smug by the way. I'm gonna buy one <laughs> because I'm actually so cheap and frugal. I'm using a subway class. And this time the money will actually go to Steve, right? Uh, well, actually. Uh, we, 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 we I, I'm, I'm gonna tell people a thing. Um, all yeah. the proceeds from any merchandise on the Great Debate community oh. stuff is gonna be split equally, uh, between Chesh and I, after taxes. Yep. Um, so and okay. any, and I think that she's worked out something for Red's merchandise swag too, or something. Yeah, uh, Red's, is, uh, Red's store is already open. He did not want to do it. I had to bully him. Um, he didn't want to do it so badly that all the proceeds for that just go to me. So there's that. So you want to support me doing shit? Go buy some stuff with Red's logo on it. Ooh. Is it Red logo trademarked, or is it copyrighted, or maybe That's it's patented? Copyrighted. I don't think it's trademarked. <laughs> but there is one. There is one that I did that is a painting of one of the shots that he got during the Orion test launch, and that painting is available on stuff now, which is really cool looking. Cool. Uh, I'll put the links in the chat for everybody. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, so I'm buying a smug for myself. I do want one. Um, I'm trying to read the super uh, the, the chat here in the super chat. So let me catch up here real quick. Uh, I think there's only one super chat. Two two pounds. Congrats on 12k. Thank you. Uh, the I got that on the fight the flat earth stream that I was on just a little while ago. Um, I'm gonna move myself over here. So I'm nice. out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna over here. There was here. another. I look better, better next to M than I do Landon. Yeah. There was another two dollar from unfinished or my unfinished journey. Oh, hell yeah. My finished journey is great. Yeah, apparently, oh, my finished journey, yeah. What? Um, Loon Juice Pear Cider. Grow a pear. Nice. <laughs> Grow a pear. So, so, but we haven't introduced everyone, because there's another dapper person that's... Uh, the dapper... Well, I mean, Ansgar's here, so I can't be the dapperest person here anymore. That voice you're hearing <laughs> is, is, is Dapper Dino? That's correct. So. Uh, yep. Fresh off of trying to play the 500 subscriber special that's quickly becoming a thousand subscriber special and, and and let me let me add this real quick before reds has a little bitch fest uh smitty says i already bought a smug but Ka got all the money oh you think so well yeah. <laughs> you think so actually i i also have uh something in the works particularly if you Temporary. guys want to give them if you guys want to give the middle finger to uh, somebody, like to to some kind of image that is absolutely, definitely not Kyle and only accidentally happens to resemble him a little bit, there will be a limited time run for a shirt that'll be something along those lines. So keep an eye out for that. Hmm. All right, what do you got from us, uh, Reds? Go for it. Okay. All right, Steve. You called me in the middle of the night. Uh, I do. You that said, often. "Listen, you need to bring the blue pill." The fuzzy handcuffs, the harnesses. So you know what I did? I, I did exactly that. I got myself a ticket on Southwest Airlines. 
I'm, I, th- th- we're not sponsored by them. I'm just a fan. I get there, and you, and, and what, and what do I see? You're in bed with another man. Um, first of oh. all, first, um, actually, this is a, this is a. There you go. I... And, and and I am shocked. <laughs> I am shocked at who it was. You were in bed with Fight the Flat Earth. Oh God! I been... <laughs> oh my God! I, I would have better taste. Than than uh, than that. <laughs> That's what I, I thought. I love fight the flat earth. Don't get me wrong, but I am not attracted to him. And he's a happily I mean, married man. At least Suter. At least Suter ha- has has that you know that oh, ancient yeah. philosophy. We, we and all that, want Suter. And, and, you yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, and also you said that he's very good at gargling. I'm not sure what you meant by that. It's a ta- it's just a talent that he has. <laughs> and <laughs> so I did all this, and and all I got was lube with some sand in it. I don't Thank keep you, getting Steve. moved away from M. I'm trying to actually position myself so it looks like I actually have, you know, girl around. I'm just using her, that's all. That's all. <laughs> there we go. We make a horrible looking that couple, That looks by like the way. kind of disturbing with just yeah. like your disembodied torso yeah, floating right. around. Yeah, I'm so, eating, so sorry, so sorry, M. It'll never work out. What? It'll never work I'm out between spice, us. I'm eating spiced rice with onions and um, oh, dang, like nice. soy sauce. So you know yeah. what, Steve? I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cheat on you, and uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cheat on you. And, I, and I've already cho- chosen the person I'm going to cheat on you with. Person or persons? <laughs> on Scarred, you and me, we're going on a date. Let's All right, man. This. His wife. Do it. His, his, this is, this and his really wife wouldn't even care. That's the greatest part. <laughs> this is really interesting because I was told that, that me and Reds were dating on Twitter. Wow. I'm <laughs> No, guys, listen, listen. She has standards. Nah. She well, no, actually, she. Has, I'm, I'm sure she likes your dulcet. Tones. I know you're not dating because she actually has vision. She. she, she <laughs> my glasses haven't been cracked. Yeah. Yet. So I mean. <laughs> when my glasses start looking like Steve, you know that you you'll know. I, I have an eye exam. Face. I have an eye exam Thursday. I'm getting contacts. Two contacts or just a one contact? <laughs> I can kick you out. Um, I'm getting two, um, but I don't know. I'm since I'd be going. Uh, yes, hum, uh, humble brag again. Since I'm taking Sweet out on a date next month, um, I actually want to wear contacts. I I don't want to wear glasses because I'm very self conscious, and I don't want to be self conscious around here. Even though she makes me feel self conscious because I well, haven't seen her. Um, but anyways. We also are you have gonna this get, problem. Are you going right? to get colors? Are you going to get no, like... No, no. Are you kidding? My eyes are gorgeous. What the fuck do I want to change the colors of? That's the one attribute that I'm not self-conscious of. I know I have nice-looking eyes. They're well, I go to surgery. I wow, wow. Eyes. Shots fired. Smitty says glasses look better than beady eyes. <laughs> 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 and, and, and you know what? It really doesn't matter anyway, because, Steve, I complimented you on your... Ex- extremely dreamy eyes, and still I got tossed out like like fucking trash. People love uh, women love my eyes. I go to bars oh, and I head out. Trash. And that's the only thing they compliment me on. They're trash. like, you have, they, not, they don't even say shit about my hair. It's always God, you have beautiful eyes. Whatever. I, anyways, that's enough about me. Uh, so uh, there's a visine for that. <laughs> there's a visine for that. So M, before we get again move on to other things. Tell them about you because you're the new person on the block. And by the way, I apologize in advance for what you're having to endure here. Not really. Oh, I'm, man. En- I'm enjoying it. Whatever's happening. I'm just, I'm just a, I'm, I'm an audience and I'm enjoying it. And She's easy. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I, I, I live in New Zealand at the moment. Oh, good. And I, yeah. Um, I, I love the country and um, I'm from India basically in uh, North India basically? to be more specific. Oh, okay. um, North India, to be more specific, and yeah, been in New Zealand now for six, six and a half years, and yeah, um, been a skeptic for a long time. Uh, just recently started debating people, and yeah, just trying to find my mojo around that. Um, so yeah, I thought I will hang out with some. Um, experts to learn a few pointers about what how oh, debate. What the hell are you doing here? I'm yeah, I mean, I mean, got landed. Yeah, you know, you're hanging out with Taylor. Here. I mean, yeah, that's why. Well, that's one of the reasons why we had to get you out of there. Is like you were you were literally hanging out with Taylor, and I'm like, okay, this 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 needs to change. Well, yeah. Well, oh, congrats, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations on on your country actually having a uh, a rocket company. So, yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, she, you have you have rockets now. She's not a flat earther, yeah. so does that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can't be in New Zealand, which is in the southern hemisphere, and be a flat earther. You say that, but I, I, I was well, in charge of communication engineering, so I can't be a flat earther. So she actually is yeah. one of those smart people. Yeah. I mean, but lady, you say that you can't be in New Zealand and be a flat earther, but there is an Australian flat earther in chat. So. Well, but now here's here's the truth. She's not actually from New Zealand, and they're not actually from Australia. They're actually just Brits that are paid to say that to try to discourage it, people from it's alleged. around well, Earth. Wouldn't, allegedly, allegedly. Mike, wouldn't, wouldn't you be an Indian who's paid to pretend to be a Brit, who's, paid, who's pretending to be a New Zealander? That's confusing. Well, I'll get deception. my New Zealand passport soon so I can, you know. I have a question. Uh-huh. Do, um, do they call astronauts something different in India? Because, no. like, in, in Russia, they call them cosmonauts. So I was just so, wondering if you guys had another name for them. So we don't have astronauts in India yet. Nobody's, like, landed on moon or something like that, you know, because astronauts are, you know, people who it's come from not, yeah, the word is like, so we have researchers, we have, um, we have researchers so far and people who work on the technology to, you know, um, reach the other planets and everything like that. But we don't have astronauts yet, I'm afraid. Just scientists and researchers. So, yeah. <laughs> You want to read the super so, chat, Josh? Yeah, uh, my unfinished journey says, as a Christian, I used to think that atheists eat puppies. After a while in this joint, Chesh has corrected me. They kick puppies and eat babies. So tonight I'm chowing down on baby back ribs. <laughs> Don't judge us. We like to have good, you know, yeah. uh, home cooked meals. No? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm not an atheist. Some puppies whatever. just <laughs> need kicking. Yeah. You know? yeah, they deserve it every so often, right? Exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. Listen, guys, here's here's a here's a pro tip. Don't just eat the babies raw. Freeze them first. <laughs> and then and then what you want to do is 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 rip the head off and then suck up the spinal fluid. It's delish. It depends on how old the baby is. Barbecue that 100% or Alfredo depends on the development stage of the baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they get old enough to become mutton. Yep. <gasps> Look who joined. Oh my god. Oh, hey. Nice. Awesome. Hey, Dr. Griffin, how are you? Oh, yeah, we got We hey, just Brandon got into the too. Hi, Brandon. Oh. I'm hey. Am I home? Hi, Brandon. Yes, Brandon, we can hear you. Hey. Hi, buddy. How's your mic? It's, it's doing good. Everyone, can you help me? I'm good. Yep, yep, you're perfect. Yeah. All right, cool. And Misha, you, what are you drinking tonight? Yes. Gin and tonic. Oh, excellent, 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 excellent. excellent. It, it, is my, it is my first drink when I arrive on the Big Island uh, at the Volcano Observatory. It's a gin and tonic. I I found out Hi. that I have a distiller that lives that's about two miles, maybe three miles away from me that makes artisanal gin, and it's delicious. Mm. Oh, excellent, excellent, who's got excellent. The, who's, got the, who's got the scraping noise? Sure. No, not me. Okay. I didn't. De oh, hard to yeah. tell. I'm not because I'm not running. India. I'm gonna mute my mic just in case. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, was I, I don't. So I'm, I'm not a big gin and tonic fan. I'll I'll drink it when I'm flying, but that's about the only. By by the way, friends, I have a, that's it for a red rhetoric. I when I was at the Holy Mountain Mau, uh crater at Kilauea. And without out in the lava fields, so I only had my cache of, of, of YouTube stuff. Um, it turned out the cache I had was your uh, shows regarding Epicor. And oh. I must say, <laughs> I laughed. Oh, by the way, yes, oh, Reds. That, uh, that, that, was, that was just epic. You're having French on, um, Leonard French? That was Yeah. That was epic. Yeah. yeah. Um, you scored I, I, on that one. Hey. I, hey, I'm just as surprised as you are. It's like, wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 got, you, got a, you got a good chunk of his time, too. No, yeah. yeah he, he got complimented, too. Yeah, I actually got complimented by the guy. Like, hey, I saw the email that you wrote back to uh, YouTuber FE Core, uh, and just the way that you wrote that email is a lot like the way I would write the emails. Like, whoa, <laughs> damn, thank you. Yeah, I know. I saw what you wrote, and I, and I, I was like, yeah, this is like spot on, man. I think, well, now, uh, I think Sly well, wrote some Epi good stuff, too. 
yeah, now Effie Core can't claim ignorance because the next time they try to say stupid shit in my direction, I'm just going to send a link to that video. <laughs> so, so it, it, it's any, what's the current state of uh, Effie Core? Do they have they um, filed their papers? Have do they have a, a corporate headquarters? Do they have a clue? No, they don't have a clue. They're still illegal in the state of Indiana. Uh, they're not anywhere close to being legit. And here's the thing, they never will be because in being legit, they would actually have to uh, give us some documentation that they don't want to give us. And on top of that, I can confirm that they have uh, stopped uh, issuing false uh, copyright and privacy uh, uh, complaints against us because I think they realize just how deep in shit they are. Um, especially after that one. But uh, what we uh, what I can say is that uh, Slice of Arcane has gotten a response from YouTube. Um, I can't say what that response is, but it is very good news. Um, no response on my end, but my video should be reinstated by Monday at the latest because Effie Core has not uh, gone to court and demonstrate to YouTube Soccer. that they're actually going to be uh, coming after me legally. What? And, you don't say. Yeah, so I was like, oh, please come after me legally. Please do so. <laughs> so, so, so uh, a, I have a super chat that says, uh, it's from William uh, Peterson, says, congratulations for having a real female engineer on. You really have stepped up from non-sec. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, we're okay. trying. Oh god, performance anyway, right. anyway so Rep, Rep, it was it was a, it was it was it was a beautiful laugh on there. I, I enjoyed uh, there on a lot of fields. So thanks. So yeah. so I have a question for you, Reds. Um, on the privacy thing, why is it that like Astronomy Live, he was able to contact YouTube. They didn't do anything about that. They oh, that was, sorry, they didn't do anything uh, for Effie They actually sided with him and said, yeah, this isn't a privacy thing. But Spike Sly Sparkane had the same thing he showed he got struck for it well i mean he's got it taken down why the the, the the difference why did one get struck and the other one not when they're the same thing that they're showing my opinion on that is that it is kind of <laughs> arbitrary and also i think a human isn't actually making these decisions That's i, I honestly do think it is an AI, and I think the yeah. AI is programmed differently depending on how many subscribers you have. Astronomy Live is over 15,000, 16,000 subs, uh, and uh, Slice Barcane is closer to four to 5,000 subs. So I'm, th I'm thinking that the AI is just programmed diff uh, differently uh, depending on who's sending the message, uh, depending on how many subscribers that individual has. And Sly Sparkanes just doesn't have the push. Now, me, I haven't fought any uh, any privacy complaints. I just decided not to even deal with it because they were hangouts. And the hangouts were already circulating on everyone else's channel anyway. Good luck getting all of them, guys. But one thing I did do uh, was I mirrored uh, Sly Sparkanes' uh, Director's Cut video against Effie Core on my channel. And I haven't received anything from Effie Core even though they already tried to do a privacy complaint uh, against Slice Barcane's original video, his original upload. And for what? Because you can hear their voice. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Reds, you how can, could you play their voice? Oh my goodness. You can't copyright how dare, how, how could you make, like, 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 make some like, just like make the uh, modify the audio a bit, like, you know, you how, can he always have to. How do I get Chesh to show up on this? Uh, I, I only got it like it's like four people, but it, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I yeah, it's the same thing. Somebody like, called Ghoul. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why it's not showing up everybody in here. We need the bull. We need the bull. <laughs> it should. Right. It should. I gotta say one thing though about Ansgar, which is that not only is he wearing a top hat, but he also has a Godzilla sticker on his mic. Which makes him by far the coolest person here because I don't Thank have a sticker. Oh really? <laughs> you know what else I got? Own. You know what else I got right here? What's that? I got guys a little toy. Why do you? I can't even why see do you it. think I want to bed with the guy? I mean, right, that's I really really now, it's show, now it's showing everybody's name. I don't oh, know. there it is. Can, can we make that oh. star bigger? Yeah, well that's what I'm trying to figure out. Why is it got everybody's name on here too? <laughs> Yoshi is awesome too, though. There, all right, got Chess here. Oh yeah, the Yoshi's uh, pretty cool. 
But Yoshi is awesome. I'm sorry, Yoshi singular? Do oh. I need to go get my I can't even hold all these Yoshis? <laughs> uh, you, okay, yeah, she has a lot of them. One moment, I've seen please. a green one, too. Ansgar, I couldn't really see. Was that, was that a Heisei Godzilla toy? What was that? Yeah, that's that's the um, 1984 um, uh, oh. variant uh, with lights and sounds, and that is the HS, those are the SH Monster Arts Bandai. Um, I also have the 1984. Uh, that was the only real appearance for that that time. <laughs> that's cute. yeah. And then I've also got oh, the Yoshi original Avenue. Gojira poster variant. I'm actually, there are two more full Yoshis that I'm missing right now. That wow. Oh, very, accessible. very, that's a, that's a, that's a cute. I'm, yeah. bad, I'm surprised I'm she bad. doesn't have a life-size no. one. <laughs> oh, well, actually, that's not entirely true. I do have a life-size something, it's just not a Yoshi. Uh, <laughs> that would be, that would be Charmander. Oh, nice. Nice. Dude, nice. I want this Charmander. <laughs> Give that to me. Okay, you can have him. It's all yours. Come get him. <laughs> it's gonna be a long flight. I was gonna say, and then above my monitor, I have an entire battle going on with a Heisei, um, uh, Monster Arts Godzilla, um, a um, uh, a King Ghidorah, a Kiryu, and Mothra with buildings and explosions and little tanks and everything. So, wow, it's like the '90s. For Godzilla just came alive on top of your monitor. Uh, don't yes. forget anybody who's typing in the Skype chat that it does show up on screen. <laughs> yeah, this is showing everything. So, cool. So, no privacy. Uh, yeah, uh, Landon, make sure you're wearing pants tonight. Maybe if uh, <laughs> if Charmander ever evolves, ever finally, then just, uh, I'll I'll just make him fly your direction. Just put him on the top of your list for active Pokemon. Then the first turn, switch him out. It'll be fine. <laughs> He'll get half the experience for the fight. I, I, I don't have I don't have the yarn Yoshi, unfortunately. These are I have like just basically standard Yoshi. What Brandon? Is that Team Skeptic down there? That's cool. Yeah, that's Team Skeptic. Wow. He, he follows me around. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is, man. It's like a little lost puppy. I disagree. I'm on here with superstars. That's cool. With that bizarre oh, frozen look in his eye. Real quick, I disagree with chat about Charizard having the most uh, character development in the show because uh, nah. Butterfree. Yeah, but just came with just Charizard yeah. is discount Charizard Godzilla. Is like, yep, I'm Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck any of you people are even talking about. All I see is Team Skeptic <laughs> staring into the void. Yeah, he's frozen, like he's con I think. Like he's constipated or just in, in query of what's going on here. <laughs> And I don't play. Oh, I don't play any of this. Wait, 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 wait. Butterfree. Butterfree. He's probably looking at me. Uh, saying, I'm sorry. Who the fuck did, is did, this guy? What was was Butterfree voiced by? Oh, I don't know. Deadpool. <laughs> Ryan Ryan Reynolds. That well, that would be Pikachu that you're thinking of. Yes. So that's, not, that's not even yes. Charizard anyway. But we're talking about the anime, so no, none of them are. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Pikachu has the greatest development because Pikachu is voiced by Deadpool. So you want to tell me, you, you, do you really want to go into this conversation? You want to tell me how much who voiced oh. the character tells you about oh, what uh -oh. character development they had? What character do you voice, in Jess? The movie, in the movie, mm -hmm. the guy who goes Pika Pika and is doing the um, the Pokemon version of voicing the character is the one who originally did the voicing for the anime. So And huh. we all know there's only one way to make Detective Pikachu better, and it's that Detective Pikachu needed to be voiced by Danny DeVito. Ch Chesh Cheshire, Cheshire did the voice for Portal Portal that, One and Portal that, that Two. That would actually be awesome. She did the voice. For, she did the voice for Portal One and Portal Portal Two. Glados. Did you guys Glados. Know that? Yeah, Glados. Guys yeah. in the live chat, back me up here. Pikachu is Deadpool. Let's do this. Hashtag <laughs> Pikachu is Deadpool. <laughs> don't Have be seen... don't be controlling my live chat. This isn't your hangout. Have you Fuck done run, run channel. Have you? Hello have there, you... Uh, David. Mm -hmm. uh, good good to see a uh, Canadian here. Uh, sorry for the uh, mess. I have to have a certain quota of Canadians. Hey, hey. He, he's not the only How's it going, everybody. I how, do I get, how do I get so many goddamn Canadians around anyway? It's, I just, it's <laughs> clever. I've, I have all these Canadians around, and I finally learned the difference between maple syrup and table syrup the other day. So. Canada. Oh, dear. Canada. Oh, dear. Orange syrup. I remember. Even I know that. Right? 
<laughs> Why would I know these things? Right. I don't even eat pancakes. And then you're too smart to use sentences like "even I know." <laughs> I, ha- I have a dark, a dark secret about Canada, and that's that an entire half of my family is Quebecois. So Ooh-hoo. there you go. Yeah, but are they uh, members of the Bloc Party, or are they just? Oh, uh, I mean, so the ones who are still in in um like uh, Quebec, I don't actually know what political affiliation they have. But the ones I'm most familiar with are all in the United States because, you know, there was some migration from Quebec down into New England. So all right, So when does the smart talk start? Um... <laughs> Say something smart quick. So so we have this hyper, we have this comet. From Thank you. Outer space. Right. It's, it's on a hyperbolic orbit, which means it's not a parabola. It's not an ellipse orbiting the sun. It's going too fast to ever orbit the sun. Right. It's, it's just basically its orbit is being deflected by a gravitational field. And uh, it's it's uh, basically came from outer space. It's going to zip through and come back out. Now, because it's a comet, it's emitting you know, lots of gas, which means we can take do a spectroscopy and other you know uh, other measurements to get a lot of information about what it's composed of. And so there's lots of, of things. Even we're even putting the uh, some of the um, you know, the telescopes on, uh, that's orbiting Mars, you know, to to, to focus on this thing because. It, you know, we, we we had the one asteroid, the rock that went went through. That was you know the first known confirmed uh, from outer space. And I'm not talking about just beyond Earth. I'm talking about it's beyond this, the the sun's influence zipping through. And so this is the second one. And the question is, are we lucky? Right? Is it just we have two of these visitors, you know, in short order, or is it the case that these things are much more common, and these are just the first two we've noticed? Um, but it's it's. It's likely, given this comment, that it's, that formed maybe some other star that was ejected and happened to pass through our, our set. It's possible also it came from here, got ejected, and we went around the the, the, the you know orbiting around in the Milky Way, and it's come back to us. So we'll know more as we uh, as we uh, take data from it. But we're quite excited, and it was it was found by a very diligent amateur astronomer who found the. Uh, uh, found the comet and then it had a weird orbit and it's like wow it's zipping through me it's, it's again it's too fast to orbit our sun it's just passing through from from up there and you know, past our sun and go down there and uh now, continue on from everywhere. Now, do you expect that the chemical composition is going to be something similar to comets in our own solar system as compared to the fact that we just had recently um, a new mineral discovered in a in a in a meteorite that uh, is not natural to Earth, so there are certain compounds, certain types of minerals that seem to exist other places that are not found here on Earth. So, would you expect the comet to be semi-consistent with comets that are in our own uh, solar system? I mean, I would, I would I would expect to be similar with chemistry because chemistry is chemistry is chemistry, right? And you know, we we know the elements because elements are defined in the number of protons and nuclei. So it's not going to be like it's, can be some unknown element. You know, we know the elements, the, 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 the stable ones, and um, it's not going to be some sort of weird chemistry because chemistry is chemistry. The thing that question is in terms of uh, what are what its ratios and what are its compositions, and if it has um, materials in a comet that are rare as far as comets go. Comets are basically dirty snowballs, right? They're 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 mostly volatiles like ice and carbon dioxide. With all kinds of gravel and stuff in it, so in that sense, the the sun heats them up. They they emit, you know, they start to warm and they start to vaporize, just like a block of dry ice when you heat it up starts to give off gas. And the sun's <laughs> radiation is pushing that gas back, and so that's where the that's where the, not only the motion but also the radiation pressure of the sun causes the tail to to go back. And there's still there are two tails. Um, some of the gases are charged. So we have one tail that's bent by the uh, magnetic field of the sun, and the other is just basically neutral, which basically is dust that goes back. Um, okay, real quick, can we have anybody mute that's not talking? Because there's a lot of background hiss and mic noise, and it's just it's with all these people in here, you're going to have to mute until you want to talk, because it's just so bad. But 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 anyway, so so it's it's exciting because you know. Um, we 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 like to see you know comments from out in the Oort cloud things that are you know that that are his first time visit into the sun because we get you know ideas about early formation of the solar system. This is an object that was most likely formed 
outside of our solar system, some other solar system. And so we're going to be able to look to see are the are the ratios of chemicals different or are they the same? So right now we get in some of the first spectra of, of the tail, gives an idea about the type of comet it is, and then people are going to be looking for unusual signatures. So again, it's going to have the same kind of physics and chemistry that anything else has. The question is, are the ratios and, and um, uh, other materials in there consistent with comets here or, or not? And we'll find out soon. And so when you say it's a hyperbolic orbit, um, it has an eccentricity greater than one. So when yes. we, instead of seeing it going around like the sun like this, it's coming in from an orbit like this, knowing that after it passes through the solar system, it's actually going to continue going away yeah. from the solar system. So it's not, it's not like it's orbiting the sun um, no. at, at a, in a odd you know, uh, angle with respect to the elliptical plane. Uh, it is actually coming in from a very different point of view where it's going to be coming in going near Mars and then going back out and exiting the solar system forever. It's not on a... Yes, yes, orbit. it's not, it's not going to come back. This is the one time we have to study it. Yeah. Um, and that's why, for example, we're, we're working on... Um, we have, you know, a polar orbiter around the, um, on Mars and see if we can get that thing turned to get some images of it. Because, you know, it, it, at least Mars might get a better, better view of it than, than Earth. But certainly Hubble's going to be there, Spitzer Telescope, other things like that. We're going to be um, looking at this uh, visitor. And but the big does- question is... But does the moon rotate, though? Uh, oh, did you, I tagged you on that, Landon. Did you hear all that, that drama on that? Well, yes, it does. It ro- rotates once a month, and it rotates around. The, it rolls around its axis, and it rotates around. Right. The, uh, and, uh, this is what I was trying to explain. Then we can maybe get some questions for people from the audience, because we've got so many people on here. We get different topics. But uh, I don't know why. Who was it? Staggerson? Jaggerson? Stager? Whatever the hell his name is. Uh, see, couldn't seem to understand. There's two types of, of of rotation involved here. There's one: the moon is rotating on its own internal axis. That's called spin. Yes. The moon is also going around the sun, which is called a revolution or orbiting. That's also revolving. Okay, so there's both of them are revolving. One is on a barycenter, the other is on the internal axis. But they're both considered revolving. So when somebody says the moon revolves, they mean that it is revolving, but it's revolving around its axis. Internal mm-hmm. axis, and that's what we call spin. You don't say the Earth spins around the Earth. Mm-hmm. You don't say the Earth spins around the Sun. You say the Earth revolves around the Sun, which is a form of rotation. Why it's doing that? It's also spinning on its own axis, which is also another type of rotation. I don't. Yeah. He didn't seem to understand this, and I don't know why. The, the Moon is tidally locked. Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. so in particular, the Moon is not symmetrical in its in its mass distribution. There's a there, the the center of the Moon is is offset from the center of mass. And that center of mass is pointing down towards the Earth, right? Between the, the there's a line between the center of the of the Moon physically, the center of mass, and the center of the, the barrier center, the, the balance point between Earth and Moon, and the center of mass of, the, of Earth. And so the Moon, and my, although the Moon mutates, it, it, it's not locked as in as in rigid. It actually shifts about ten degrees side to side. Yeah. So we can the ter- see the ter- about the Terminator, the Terminator um, on the uh, the side will. You can actually see a little bit behind it and a little bit behind it, depending on the season where it's at. But yeah, it's not exactly the same thing. There's certain craters at a certain time of the year you can see a little bit more than you can the other uh, other times. Of the year. Yeah, and so it's it's currently tightly locked. Um, eventually, the Earth's um, um, day is going to spin down, and the Earth will become tightly locked back to the Moon. But that's long, long, long in the future. All right, interesting. So I was right on that, Chesh. Um, shocker. <laughs> Uh, Lid, I, the, uh, I have a, I a question it. though. I got a question for you, Landon, about orbits oh. and stuff. What What do you think about proposals to use a big space mirror to reflect one to two percent of the light away to control global warming? Do you think it's possible? Well, I mean, yes, but 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 part of the problem of of if you if reduce the the, the amount of solar radiation down on Earth. Um, or create a shadow, then you're going to create, um, you're going to have areas of the Earth where it's under that are going to not receive as much, you know, because plants still need sunlight to photosynthesize. Um, as far as, as the cost, it sounds like pretty impractical. You might do better off pumping in less, let's say, uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than you well, would Well, that's be obviously ultimately the best. Giant, 
a giant mirror to try to cover up what you're doing, right? It, 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 maybe yeah, but do you, do you see that being possibly used as sort of a stopgap versus, um, I, I mean, obviously we want to reduce greenhouse gases. That's the, the it's just the, the amount of time that that'll take. But and it could you sounds to be like a really challenging problem to try and, and get something that large to reflect that much um, radiation and then keep it in there because that, that pressure is going to push on it um, when you have the reflection, just not going to reflect that much energy and have a thing sit. So it's, 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 it'd be a significant challenge. It may be easier to do other things, but... All right, yeah. so let me ask you, what about the feasibility? Then we'll get to the next super chat and then maybe get uh, Dr. Griffith in here or something. Um, what do you think about the feasibility of having a 100 gigawatt laser pointed at uh, a satellite the size of a paperclip that has 100% reflectiv uh, reflectivity where it reflects all incoming light so it just completes parts of momentum to try to get it to about 40% the speed of light to send it to Alpha Centauri? Is that pra It's practical. It can happen in theory, but should we do it? I mean, I, I, again, I, the, 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 you know, the, the numbers show that would be very difficult, um, but... But that's what it take. It would take a hundred gigawatt laser, by the way. That's a lot that's, of energy. That's a fairly that's <laughs> a fairly lot of power. Yeah. Trust me. Yes. Um, uh, for that sort of thing, and and furthermore, um, you know, Somebody it, call Doc Brown. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this. Ouch! You beat me to it. Ouch! I'm 21. Br Brandon, you, new mic. <laughs> you could you don't need to yeah, be up that sorry, close to yeah. it. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. I mean, I, I don't have to say it's impossible. That's also a, a pretty tall order. There, there are certainly more, probably more practical ways to to get things going. Um, a good fraction of the speed of light, um, but even so, you know, the stuff that we talk about, you know, going to things like Altamontori are, are going to be you know a long journey, a long, long time. Yeah, it's speed of light. Flat, flat Earthers say it's subjective, anyways. Um, want to read the super chat, Shesh? And then we get some questions. So yeah, I can do to... that. I'm just, I'm just having a straight up argument in chat. <laughs> John Rapp said, "Flurfs point out the moon is in the Earth's atmosphere. That refutes their other claim, and rockets do have something to push on." They can't have it both ways, can they? <laughs> but where is the turbulence in the atmosphere caused by the moon moving across in our atmosphere? Right? I, I don't know. Say, Josh, yeah. I'm shocked. That That's what causes hurricanes, Landon. It's so why, rare. Why don't, it's, why don't we see that streaks of, 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 of wind going across wind swept? Uh, yeah, that's uh, hurricanes. I don't think the, they understand. The turbulence causes hurricanes. Problem I, solved. I don't think they understand how rarefied it is at the, at the, at the position of the moon. Right? They, they don't understand um, scale at all. I mean, that's one thing I noticed with, that's ubiquitous among all flat earthers is they have no idea about scale. My uh, going to be there. Oh, well, by the way, I, I haven't even paying attention. Um, we got, oh, we got almost two people watching. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, all wrong. Charizard is great, but <laughs> Caterpie not only had goals, wanted to go to the moon, managed to evolve. Then, when he was Metapod, beat a pincer using only Harden, then sacrificed himself to save Ash, and then beat up an entire hive full of Beedrill, and is the only reason Ash got the Cascade badge. Y'all can scoff. You scared me. Any yeah, but you Squirtle me. had sunglasses. Chess, <laughs> Chess, you straight up scare the shit out of me, by the way. Just FYI. Listen, I like her. <laughs> Why? Just saying, Charizard is still discount Godzilla. It's just a fact. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that ends, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, super yeah. chat. Um, by the way, Chess, people are stroking your fucking ego tonight. What are up with this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, my Unfinished okay. Journey for $2 says, Landon, what's the cause of Ken Trails? Duh. Cams. Cams. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Princess April Van Ryn. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, Steve is awesome. Chesh is amazing. Landon has a beautiful mind. Love you all. Uh, oh, thank God. So the cause of so-called chemtrails is called condensation. It's, it's it's when the saturation in the in the in a block of air, particularly from a uh, airplane, has moved through it to create turbulence, um, reaches the point where you get 100% uh, saturation and condensation. Uh, 
I had no idea that the Illuminati was in control of comments, condensation. That's so uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, we we control the even the temperature of condensation too. So. M, M, what, uh, are you, what was M drinking tonight? M, uh, what did you say you were drinking tonight? M coffee. M drinking she said coffee. She was drinking coffee. Yeah. That's it. I think she's oh. frozen. Oh, she's frozen. Oh, I got a message um, earlier. Laptop went to shit. Side side note, Arnsgar. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that as much as Charizard is a Godzilla ripoff, he is only like five foot six. Well, yeah. yeah. See, if if I could collect a full size Godzilla <laughs> and stomp a Pokemon with it, I would play Pokemon. So, well, so what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, well, there is, are Pokemon that do that. They're just not Charizard. So, like, so what you're saying a, is, is there's a Dragonite that is. No, 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 I, I mean, I want Godzilla, the one and only Godzilla, just in a Pokeball. Oh, you just want, you just want yes. Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got it. So, yeah. So it seems like what you're saying is, is that Charizard is to Godzilla what you are to pretty much every other human. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh. No, wow. that's not what I'm saying at all. William Ratio Peterson wise. said, "I wish, I wish Landon and Steve would do a series of discussions about nuclear power. I would really like Landon's take on the hyper sound, uh, hyper around LFTR reactors. Liquid, oh, hyper, sorry, liquid, not hyper. Liquid fluorium thorium, liquid fluor, liquid fluoride oh, thorium yeah. reactor. Jesus Christ! Ty, yes. Before you answer that, the the answer to Arnsgar wanting Godzilla in a Pokeball is to play Digimon." <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I don't know what this craze is with with thorium reactors. Now, I mean, obviously, they're they're going to have a, a low, I think, a lower power density than than uranium. But uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a big craze for it. I, I mean, it's not anywhere near safer as far as I know, as far as the coefficient of reactivity. But uh, it seems from, to be a big from what I've been hearing lately, Steve. They've been saying that like it's just cheaper to thorium to, reactors are far safer, and that like a little ball of thorium the size of a marble has enough power potential to basically provide enough power to, for what one person is it higher power with, density like, for the thorium um, i i i don't yeah, know yeah it's much it. higher okay and it also um there's like the amount of time it takes to break down is like well yeah it, it, uranium many, takes a very many, long many, time. many many times less than uranium and it's, it's easier it's, to it's, mine it's as cheaper well. to mine yeah, I mean, the processing i thought was the easier i didn't know if there's a power density the, yeah, the, no, main, the main reason the, why we have all these uranium reactors was that the need to make plutonium for the need to make critical masses to have things go boom, right? And and so the, the, the nuclear, <laughs> nuclear economy became fairly common for uranium-based systems. Um, I think Thor has some, some useful uh, properties, and I think that we should be exploring those. Um, and in fact, Canada did some some lead their research in thorium reactors as well. Yeah, somebody, Steve, yes, Steve yes. Strangelove, before he, uh, don't don't blame the entirety of America for the bad dub of Digimon. That was definitely a Fox <laughs> Kids problem, <laughs> not all America. But as somebody thorium <laughs> points out, thorium is probably less likely well, to produce fissionable material for weapons um, that you would find for. Yes. Kids. Yeah. So that that's yeah. true. Um, but because I mean, I don't trust you know when you have. When you have like Iran, and they have thousands of centrifuges, and they're they're enriching this uranium way past the point you need for commercial grade. There's an issue to be had there because there's only one other purpose for for that to be enriched that much. If it's not for commercial use, what's the other possible thing? Weapons grade, and I don't think they're fooling, I don't think they're fooling anybody but Trump. Yeah. And, and 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 the other thing, of course, is that that when you reach, when you reach enriched uranium to the three to five percent uh, range. You've gone nearly even eight percent of the work necessary to get to weapons grade, yeah. even though weapons grade is technically ninety percent. Although you can make weapons at seventy and lower, um, you've done eighty percent of the work by just getting the three to three to five percent. Yep, that's and, the hardest and part. And all you have to do in order to do that last twenty percent is replumb your centrifuges. To be fair, Steve, I don't. I think that the sentence "I don't think they're fooling anybody but Trump" would apply to almost any situation. Very like much. a magician yeah. could go to the White mm -hmm. House and like pull their thumb off, and yeah. like, <laughs> I don't think they're fooling yeah. everybody, anybody but Trump. Like, that's, 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 isn't that yeah, Trump loses his mind. Uh, Neville Eleven says, oh. uh, "For a group toast, if Steve can get everyone on." Screen. I don't know how to do that. Uh, and also, uh, somebody, uh, Seraph sixty four wanted to ask Landon um, what the impact of nuclear uh, of a nuclear fusion reactor would have on, in climate change. Well, certainly, um, fusion reactors, um, like like fission reactors, 
are, are not going to produce the type of greenhouse gases that, that would concentrate energy into the atmosphere. I mean, the big, the big problem with, with, with climate change is effectively we're forcing energy to the atmosphere. When the atmosphere is more energetic, you're going to get hotter hots, colder colds, more drastic you know, storms, um, uh, lots of other problems. So for, by, by not forcing as much energy in the atmosphere, um, systems like nuclear power um, can uh, you know, a, a slow down basically the atmosphere becoming more energetic. The same with hydro, uh, wind, other 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 sources. And 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 again, in order to be have a rational energy economy, you need to have a a distribution of types of energy sources. It's not as if one energy source does everything, right? You want to have you want to distribute how you're producing power so you don't have single sources of failure, single sources of of, of source material problems. Um, you want to have a, a plethora of, of energy systems, of which nuclear is one of those, and fusion is another. So we get. I'm sorry. Did um, somebody just mention card captors in the chat? I don't remember that Has fusion been 20 years away or so for the last like 50 years? <laughs> yes. In fact, I I even you know I got started. Uh, what is that noise? Fusion reactors. It's it's a it's a it's a hard problem. Uh, Team skeptic, you weren't removed. You 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 your thing went to shit. But uh, there's a weird water noise. A weird noise. Yeah. Um. It's fusion is is a is a difficult problem. Having fusion, sustained fusion, and then getting to the point where it produces more energy than it takes to run the reactor, and then doing it economically. That's even harder, right? And so people are working on it. It's not as if they're being lazy. There's a lot of effort being going into a number of different approaches. And Landon, fact, have you seen that guy who's got the thing? Um, he's like call it like an earth generator or whatever. It runs on batteries, spins around super fast. Or not batteries, magnets. I'm not familiar with that specific one. Let's see if I can find his name. Uh, yeah, they're super lots of different things, but... But as I say, fusion has promises if they get it to work. Um, but it still is it's a very, very difficult problem. Yeah, we've had we've had sustained fusion though. The problem is is it usually doesn't give you anything really more out than what you put in, so it's not really uh cost efficient. Efficient. Yeah. They say that they're reasonably close to having some sort of a mini fusion reactor at Skunk Works. Yeah, I mean I think there's there's, there's some interesting approaches now. We've learned yeah. a lot and there are a couple of interesting approaches that that are, are are promising for, you know, to see that happen. Who do you think so, is like uh, from to the best of your knowledge? Who do you think is the closest to to coming up with a system? I mean, I think the, the, the European the European uh, system looks very very promising in terms of of, That's of a very, having a known they, approach. Yeah, known known approach with ITAR and stuff. A having a known approach and and scaling it up and and doing the hard science necessary. You know, I think they're on the path to to to, to get something going. Um, Z pinch is another one that's, that I think is, is a very uh, uh, has has a, has a lot of promise. Um, uh, I know that people doing doing the laser fusion stuff um, hold out on that, but but there's going to be significant problems in going from a you blast lasers once to get to create a little mini star it goes poof. Um, to do that repeatedly and get a reactor is going to be a, a big challenge. You want to read that so super chat? More practical for Z pinch or 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 the um, um, the, the reactors and the, that the uh, international uh, ignition uh, people are working on, but there's other there's other small things like this kind of works up. I think also has some inter interesting approaches. So let them all um, you know uh, work on a problem and and see who gets something promising. You guys saw? Did you guys hear that hiss with Landon's mic? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's just not unusual like for for Landon. It's not too yeah, bad. it's not super intrusive though. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, when you're wearing <laughs> headphones, it kind of is. But uh, I, oh, okay. And the outside check yeah, in here I've too. Got my sure. volume pretty low. But uh, hey, there, there's some. You got a weird. Yeah, you got a weird hiss when you when you talk. It's it's. Maybe unplug your mic and plug it back in. Okay. Yeah. Um. And while you do that, so we can read the super chat, and then we gotta get to Misha and M. By the way, they've been ignored. And um, I will drop William. this uh, link in here. It's called the uh, the, hey, the guy hey, I was thinking of, Landon. Hey, hang on, Dave. Okay. William Peterson for five dollars says climate change is exactly why I brought this up. I think an increase in nuclear is essential to rapidly weaning off of 
fossil fuel. Yeah, I know. I, I agree with that. I think definitely. I mean, I'm a, obviously a proponent of nuclear power, um, but I definitely think we need to wean off fa fossil fuels. It's just it's there. It's just unsustainable, uh, especially with the fact that they are definitely causing yeah. uh, anthropogenic gases, causing global warming. There's no question yeah, about yeah. it. So, yeah. So, well, so testing, hydrogen, testing. Hopefully, this is better. cells and hydrogen um, fuel cars and stuff. That's kind of the next step after the EVs. Yeah, we have had, we have buses down here that are uh, fifth generation hydrogen cells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, in New Zealand also we have started with um, I think so. There's a port that has set up a hydrogen um, fuel plant for incoming ships. So we are starting with that, and we are, my one of my uh, managers is very, very curious about that, and he's very excited to when we will have like compart compartmentalized this technology enough into to um, get into cars. I think so. Some companies have already started in that direction. Hybrids, yeah. yes, but not pure hydrogen um, fuel. Yeah. Well, the, the, those that don't know um, that New Zealand has done a lot of really great work in 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 scalable energy production. Oh, um, they're 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 they got good stuff there. Hopefully, this is a better mic situation. Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, that sounds. You unplugged it and plugged it back in, better. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah you, you've had this problem before. That's like I was. I, I wasn't trying to. Sounds strange. You've had that problem before, and you unplugged it, and plugged it back in, and fixed it. The um, how simple? Yeah. Um, I was uh, thinking Earth. about Landon. Uh, His name is Dennis Danzig, and he calls this thing the Earth Engine. And he's been building like it, it's a pretty interesting setup. It's got like these heavy rotating discs that are spread a certain way, and you just start it spinning, and then it kicks off on its own. Like, mm -hmm. I think it has I've ahead. seen something it's like that before, machine. but that person turned out to be yeah. They're all. Um, I've, yeah, seen no, like I've seen I've seen people like that as well, and their things were just like kind of like BS. Magnetic but... fields. Is it like it generates magnetic fields, and um, they they kind of feed themselves after a while? Is this what this is about? Uh, uh, no, they're they're using the pressure from the from the magnetic field between the casing yeah. and these like spread out things mm -hmm. to, to continue the, the momentum. And then sounds like they a, run. Sounds like it's bullshit, like an M drive. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Cause like, I will have to, I'll have to have a look at it because I've seen something similar in the past. No, I mean, I have too. And that this guy looked like he was doing something a little different and on a, on a kind of a I, more professional scale. And I was like, Oh, this is interesting. I wonder if it's bullshit or not. Yeah, I move on a little bit. I, I already see a lot of problems with it. There's a lot of power cables going around here. There's a power. It's attached to a power um, supplier. Um, so um, I already have problems with it. So yeah, Manya, I, when I, is I, he I, going to Reg, that power supply? Reg, Reg, That's Reg, question. Reg is taken off. Ansgar had a question. And we got a super chat and some other stuff in the live chat. So uh, I, Nadia, I, Nadia I, I, I'll read this one. Nadia says, the trick is that the gasified coal is typically used as the feedstock well, other things would be better. Okay. Yes. Yeah. By the way, I'm moving on to bread and butter uh, nice. gardening from Napa. And then we got a super chat if the chest wants to read that. William Peterson again for five dollars says hydrogen still has to be generated with electricity. Not sure what that accomplishes above next generation absolutely, electric. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the hydrogen to, to use hydrogen, you know, in the preform. But form, we can have renewable it. energy but for the, that. But, but the hydrogen comes from electrolysis mostly. Is that the, the, the yeah? Right, little, but what or, she's saying is that you don't have to use fuel. You can use renewable resources to get that electricity to pipe, to get the hydrogen. Well, you, need, you, need, you, need, you need energy to, to, to disassociate the hydrogen from right. using what it's yeah. was bound one, like like water. And that takes um, energy. And there are there is bacteria which require solar, you know, solar heating. Um, there's other processes that you can get, but but hydrogen is is not a free thing. You've got to put yeah. energy in in order to get some energy out and due to thermodynamics so, you get less but energy it's out a, it's a clean energy once you get it you, it's yeah. not so why, anything why why can't we matter. why can't we have matter antimatter like star trek because that's 100 percent conversion a gram of antimatter would be a hydrogen bomb or at least an atomic bomb. because of how much energy it takes to make the antimatter and how hard it is to contain Absolutely. Always the pessimist. Always the pessimist. I mean, I mean, sorry. Wait, wait, I, and, and, I, and, and the, he's more of a realist, really. And you know, the durations of, of, of like, you know, the few Nikki, thousand, really, like, you know, anti anti hydrogen atoms, you know, yeah. at CERN on, on order of minutes, right? Not, 
because when it goes wrong, everybody's after the engineer. You didn't see that coming in. But, but, eh? but that's <laughs> but still though. I mean, ma- mass has so much energy and it's ridiculous. Literally, a gram of a gram of mass has an enormous yeah, amount of energy problem, in there. Problem, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> screw the engineers. Yeah, screw the engineers. Dude, we are the ones who are stopping you from making the decisions that you can blow up the entire planet. You and your, you you and your silly, you and your silly laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> okay, oh. can, can you can oh, you let's 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 let's, uh, let's, let's, let's sharpshoot the the engineer. You know, well, engineer in training. You um, do you remember the do you know what the zeroth law of thermodynamics is? E, I might, I might not. I'm not. Landon may not. Do you, do, does Landon remember the zeroth law? Thermodynamics. Um, there are four. It's laws what everybody and forgets, and I don't know why. There's a zeroth law of thermodynamics. Yeah. So and what, and that's what, why people. Yeah. Uh, when when everybody asks, like, how many laws of thermodynamics are there? Everybody four. says three. There's four. No, it's four. <laughs> right. Because the zeroth law is, it simply states that if if system A is in thermal equilibrium with system B and system B is in thermal equilibrium with system C, then A is with the thermal equilibrium of system C. It's, it's transitive. That's all it is. Yeah. All, yeah. All... I, but you're, you're considering systems that are um, isolated. They are not. It doesn't really. They're not isolated. It doesn't matter. Which is no. never going to happen. No, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if they're isolated or not. If you have two equalized states where we have system A and system B where they're both in thermal equilibrium. Yeah. Yeah, the law is there. How do you achieve transitive. that equilibrium in real life? Um, uh, you yeah. have a little demon that sits between the two states, and the demon <laughs> takes the molecules that are hotter. It's demon. called Maxwell's demon. <laughs> and, so, and so, brilliant. If you, if, you, if you have two systems that are each in thermal equilibrium, philosophers get that joke. One, they're they're in equilibrium with each other. That's that sort of is is there's there's a uh, so again you have two systems that are in, in each equilibrium with a third one. Then those two states are yeah. an equilibrium with each other. Yes. Sort of seen, it wasn't really seen as a law, it's sort of seen as a transitive, you know, basically that's all a transitive. It is, but sure, but it's, it's, called, it's called the zero law. Describes the process. And yeah. What, what, so what, 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 what was your specialty again for your engineering field? Mine, um, telecommunications and um, a little bit of electrical right, instrumentation. So, so satellites, they actually do orbit the Earth. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you can use that argument for flat earthers. Like, dude, if you're, if you were not in a glow, the satellite communication uh, won't work. The satellites uh, that are orbiting the planet, um, that won't work. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that I can't see the southern stars because the southern sky is one of the most beautiful skies on the planet. Oh, yeah. And in the north, like, we just, in New Zealand, <laughs> you can see some of the most beautiful skies. Yeah, like, but you've got too much water vapor in your sky too. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I also so dropped. Right, Landon's reason... throwing shade. Right, Is damn. That what that was? <laughs> yeah, I, I caught that too. <laughs> Even so, but it was clear it's beautiful there. So, so uh, I wanted to ask if anyone had seen the uh, anything about the recent discovery of the extremophiles uh, found um, under the Galapagos. Yeah. Ah. I, I, I saw. I was. Was that the um the various layers of of, of micro microbes they were finding? Yeah, the very deep yeah. and um the deep mine and they I eat um uh, they, 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 they live sulfur and they, yeah. eat rock. So the, so the, so yeah. basically Ooh. they're they're non aerobic. They they live on sulfur compounds, and they'll I actually digest the, the rock. Yeah, yeah, I saw that article. I read all that shit too. So they're like absorbing minerals, like and processing, like what? Yeah, um, they're minerals. eating things like pyrite, um, pyrite and gold. um, yeah, and and they're they're actually breathing sulfur. How's that cool? Is that oh, nice. wow, Landon? Didn't we just talk about sulfur breathing now, biospheres? Yeah, but yes, but did. that 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 but that would be the type of organism we would expect to find on alien landscapes. Yeah, that's what uh, Landon and I were talking about. Why? Like, if you okay, point so a telescope what, what at a planet, how do you tell? Like no. something that cannot survive on Earth. Is that what's... Oh, but it is surviving on Earth. Alien. Well, yeah, I, so they're not alien. No, 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 but, but we would expect to see that kind of life form on an alien planet. The, the thing that I would next question be is, if that's the alien life that we'd expect to form, find, um, how do we find any intelligent life? Because that's obviously... In, the, uh, in, the, in these more hostile environments, these super-Earths, where the temperature is much ha- higher, higher gravity and some other things that mm-hmm. not sustainable for human life... Would we expect to find any intelligent life there? Probably not. It would probably be on the microbial scale. 
So where the uh, hell is the intelligent life? Well, it depends, like, what is sure the life. Like, some here. that shit, we right? can <laughs> I was about to say that. Well, so one, one thing is, so the biosphere on Earth is about three to three and a half billion years old. But the portion of that that has had intelligent civilization building life is essentially zero. So it's entirely possible that even if intelligent life was a common development in biospheres, we would still never detect it just because it's such a small part of the total life of that biosphere. Sure. But there's 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 an, almost an infinite number of planets in the universe. There's got to be intelligent life somewhere. If that's so, so we don't we don't know how long intelligent civilizations like can last, yeah. right? Maybe intelligent civilization gets smart enough to to avoid their atmosphere going to hell in the hand basket, uh, deflect big rocks, that sort of thing. Maybe the intelligent civilizations can last a long time too. We don't know. Well, we, we would expect to see remnants if we ever got to their planets, but. So, I, what kind? What would intelligent life be like? That's my always yeah, my greatest exactly. question. Yeah, exactly. Like something which can comprehend what we are doing or saying or communicating, trying to communicate, or something different. Yeah. Do you think that, would it be anthropomorphic? Would it be, have bilateral symmetry? Would it have a brain like us? I mean, it's weird to think how we, we might be the most the only sentient creatures in the entire universe. But at the same time, the odds are just. Seemingly impossible for that. There was, this, I think that there was this movie that came out of uh, Natalie Portman. This was about, um, I don't know, where they kind of showed like a creature mirrored her. In the in the end, the creature was mirroring her, and um, it was. Uh, yeah, Spoiler yeah, alert. that one. <laughs> Annihilation <laughs> was a really good movie. Well, I haven't seen it yet. Go go watch it. It's on Amazon. That, that kind of life, like so thinking life or intelligent life, you know. Go, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Aliens versus um, predators. So, I, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, that's intelligent. Oh my at. god! One thing that's Come interesting on. is that you can look at different organisms <laughs> on Earth that have developed similar levels of intelligence that are very high, uh, mm. convergently. So we have things like corvids, cetaceans, and apes, all developed a very high level of intelligence separately. And mm. one of the things that's interesting is that. One big thing that connects all of them in terms of their cognition is an ability to look into the future in, ter in their mind and make plans and ideas about what could come next. And I think that if, uh, if uh, intelligent life were to evolve somewhere else, that's one thing that we could use as kind of the marker of, is this intelligence? Is Are these organisms able to look uh, through their mind's eye into an imagined future in order to make predictions and make plans about that future because otherwise they might be entirely alien it might be very hard to say are they intelligent or not but because we've seen that evolve independently several times on earth we could probably use that as some kind of indicator if we were to ever actually encounter alien I, I, organisms I, which I, itself I, is unlikely i think it is a much easier test you just alien that we run across and we want to know if they're intelligent we just say do you do you live on a planet that's round or flat Right? I thought, that's where you, I thought that's where you were gonna go with that. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a pretty good limits oh. test. We got a we got a super chat, Blue Flare twenty five. Landon, what do you think about the US ICBMs being deactivated by UFOs at Maelstrom Air Force Base in the nineteen in in the nineteen sixty seven? Is it real or BS? I'm I'm not aware of anything that would, you know, deactivate an ICBM like that, so that's 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 information yeah, I, don't, we, I don't have. Sorry. Uh, we, this is where we're going to turn it over to the actual historian in the room. Um, she might know something about this or may not. Yeah, right. When the question gets hard, come see me. Thanks, guys. What, what the hell? You learned? <laughs> you went to school for something? <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I'm trying to figure out. Did we have ICBMs in in 1967? Yeah, yeah, I guess we did. But they, but they, um, they were there's. I mean, they're probably more of a gap lock thing. I, I mean, what kind of alien technology can do anything to actually affect anything? By the way, the computers back then. Well, look look at the computer systems we had back then. I mean, <laughs> well, not only that, but how were we communicating? It was mainly through microwaves. Uh, lots can go wrong with a microwave. Get a flock of birds. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's, it's direct line of sight. Right. So it's so so there was a lot that could go wrong. Yeah. Uh, 
back in 67. It's amazing, though, that all the UFO stuff seemed to come about where UFOs were a big talk, right? They had the Foo Fighters yeah. and they had all these movies that were coming out. They had H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. So people had this on their mind. So there's a lot of hype about when they didn't when they see something, they didn't know what it was. Must be a UFO. Um, te- technically, it was because it was unidentified. That, that's but. another thing, isn't it? UFO is an unidentified flying object. I don't understand <laughs> when we talk of UFOs, people immediately jump, oh, aliens. And like, no, it's because unidentified it's just flying associated. object. We it's, don't know what it is. It's just, be, it's just become a social norm. That's well, all. But, it's, but, but as Neil deGrasse Tyson points out, as cameras become more sophisticated and everybody has a camera in their pocket now the actual pictures of ufos seem to be going down the numbers of pictures so (laughs) yeah yeah, that that kind of tells you something actually um i gotta say this way back um uh in in the bad old days of vhs machines uh i used to work as an audio visual technician at a major hotel in Los Angeles. And there was like one of the, this is like uh, uh, early 1990s. And one of the big like UFO investigators, a guy who had written all these books and everything, he had uh, ordered up a VHS recorder for his uh, hotel suite. This is before, you know, when you had, when you didn't have them in every room. Mm. And, uh, I was there setting it up and there was another guy who was a UFO um, researcher and they're like sitting there having a pissing contest about who had the highest security clearance. Well, mine is super secret double whatever. And well, mine's super. Well, I work with the NRA. Well, I work with the NRO and I was, you know, mine's so secret. I can't tell you my stories. Yeah. And it was, and, and it was at that point I realized these people are nuts. Yeah. Beta better than VHS anyways. So speaking of aliens and oh, stuff, uh, definitely, yeah. I guess there's going to be a thinning of the herd of a culling of dumb people on the 20th? The 20th? Oh, oh, oh yeah. yes. the, the, the rating of... Are you talking about Area 51, yeah. Naruto? Raid Area 51, the Naruto. So for it. I call it the culling of the dumb Go people, but it. yeah, whatever. Uh, there's already yeah. two Do... people that have been arrested. Yeah. Do not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do not attempt to enter those areas. Um, don't even approach it because there's lots of like nukes that have gone off in that area <laughs> and bad chemical explosives with residue. And, uh, as much as yeah. I respect uh, Landon and I love him, and I think he's the best and you should absolutely listen to him. Do it, pussy. Take it from that, somebody uh, who helped make some holes out there. Look, I, I just hole I in that area. That. If they run really fast, oh, everybody gets separated with just, lemon juice. Naruto run really fast. Run. So, yeah, Naruto run for, for radiation. Gabriel hey, Green, coming. Oh, they're they're, they're not going to make it more than 40 or 50 feet from their car. Oh, no. X-rays. Oh, no, they're they're ah, just going to lock all the doors and they're going to have military well, you, people you are up well to monitored. The base. I'm, I'm sure of it. You are well monitored before you even get near the yeah, but see, I mean, that's not the only thing happening on the 20th, right? There's hundreds of miles of square desert out there. They can't monitor all of you. Try it. Try it. Try it. Yes, they can. They can actually if they want to. They know every person that's planning to go, they've already got them watched. I I think so. The two people who were arrested, I'm very sure they had their phones on them and they were trying to record it. Um, And yeah, that's the most easy way to catch someone in an area. Like, you got a phone on you. Like, how many people, let's take bets here. How many people you think are actually going to go to that event? Too many. I don't know, but I Arthur? hope that they wear their tinfoil hats to reflect the radar. Well, I think apparently, apparently not enough. Not enough. Do you think it's more than a hundred, more than a thousand? I think thirty. Thirty people. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think thirty. I'll go for thirty as well. I, I, thirty people. I, I, I think there's, well, there's going to be 300 yeah. people watching 30. There, there's yeah. two things. There's yeah, how they many will people... be watching and they're like, yeah, I'm not there. Right. Right. There's how many people will show up they'll be, they'll outside be of Area 51 watch. and how many people will actually be, try to storm. That, and that's going to be very different numbers, I think. It'll be that first five people get get blown to smithereens, and then after that, they're done. <laughs> See ya. Well, the guy, the guy who you actually been commanded to step back. Please step back. I don't know, man. People are stupid. No, They, they don't even uh, wait for you anymore. Um, in, in my country, they say... Please step back, and then they shoot you. It, it they don't give yeah. you much time. 
It'll yeah, be, guy, yeah. the guy who actually started the meme by accident, like he didn't do it on purpose, is actually now <laughs> trying to set it up to be more like a convention, kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, that, Burning that, Man that, or that, that, Talk, essentially. Uh, that cat's out that, of bad. No, he's, he's, a, he's been trying to set it up so that it can actually just be a get-together where they don't actually go in Storm Area 51, but he is actually uh, trying to set up like vendors and yeah, stuff. Yeah, not, that's not going to happen. There are going to be some conspiracy theorists who are, who are going to be, I knew it! I said about this a long this time This is the ago. government trying to, to prevent us from doing this. Yeah, you're going to have some idiots going to try. You just, it's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be that but, many. I think 30 seems again, excessive to me. And again, in those, those areas, <laughs> as you even, when you are Hundred, you know, hundred miles away from it, you're being monitored. As you get close, you're you're to danger areas. And by the way, there's danger areas even around the danger areas. So, so again, do your life a favor and just stay away, stay home, please. And don't and land, area. stay home and watch it on camera. Now. Oh yeah, just watch the other people that, that don't listen to that. That's all. Enjoy, enjoy that. <laughs> Have you been to Area 51, Landon? Or can you... Bye, Anscar. Uh, I can before, either confirm or deny any information star. regarding Area 51. Before. <laughs> he, can't even tell you if, he can't even tell you if Area 51 exists. Jesus, yeah. guys, yes, hold on. Guys, 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 before Arnsgar leaves, Arnsgar. don't forget to go and check out his GoFundMe for, he's, he's got car troubles, he's got some medical bills he's got to deal with, and for him to be able to even be here, he needs some assistance, so go check out his GoFundMe. Can, can, can Thank you very put that much. Link in a uh, yeah, yep. 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 uh, I'll, 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 I'll find. Oh, you got it. Cool. No, no, okay. you, you got it. I'm giving it to you. Oh, put, it, right. put, it in, put it in the other link as well, <gasps> because you know, I'm, Susan banned me from YouTube for making fun of Australia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. I know, very, I, very. I, I, I said that Red Eye lived oh, in alleged continents. Hi, Nick. <gasps> Hi. <gasps> Hi. <gasps> God, you two look like so fam- like similar, like just like yeah. This is like this is Nikki. This is Nikki Davis's greatest <laughs> fantasy right here. Oh yeah, she would like. <laughs> Definitely. Would you, would you like? To, would you like to be right here? Just, no, somewhere over here. I don't mm-hmm. know. Actually, I, I would be. I would be behind <laughs> camera. Um, just brushing your hair throughout all the streams. Yes. And, and in other yes. places. Kiss me, wow. Nick. Kiss me. Oh. Hey, the very oh, harass- you notice I can harass him and he doesn't care, but anybody else in here, I'll get sued. Listen, listen. The very first stream we were on, you're like, there's no amount of alcohol, Nick. I'm sorry. So you're basically saying you'd rather I'm, die of poison. I'm just making you. you feel good about yourself, okay? Uh, I, 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 that's all. The, I, I, I need it. Thank you. Uh, there's the link to Arms yeah. Arms go- Fund me as well as he also does art. So if you want to check out his art, he's also got a Patreon. Oh, okay. Is Nick (gasps) Nick is undressing? God, I take off. I take off. Listen, it's a special event, so I've got the five hundred or sorry, four hundred and one dollar coat today. Is because of the special event. Yeah. Okay. Like an actual shirt. How how was your How was your debate? Uh, it, it was. It got a little intense. I was. I was surprised. I know Vosh can be a little, but he he got pretty on to uh, Mr. Friended there. So really? it was. It wasn't a reasonably intense did, debate. What, yeah, what I, were you I, debating? I would have. I would have muted him uh, once or twice probably if I had. And I had to. And he once he was. You know, once you told him to. to you know, he was good about it. But once or and once or twice, actually, both James and I were coming in, and they were uncontrollable. So how was like, how was Friended though? I mean, it was on socialism versus capitalism. But how was how was, was Friended? On, uh, I I think he had he struggled on occasion. I think um, that's a hard on, topic. On, I wouldn't be able to debate either one of those. And it, I'm a capitalist, but it's yeah, still yeah yeah. I, well, no, I think I think he did well. I think uh, he struggled. I think Vosh really knows his stuff when it comes to it, and uh, has been has been preparing that kind of debate for a while. And that may not be Adam's number one wheelhouse, but um, you know. So uh, uh, and, uh, yeah. So let me ask you this. Yeah, but go yeah. ahead. No, my point. My point is, you know. Capitalism versus communism. That is Jerry and my normal over coffee discussion. <laughs> so, which, which, well, one thing Vosh did was Vosh limited it immediately. At the very beginning, it was just like, all I'm talking about when it comes to socialism is who owns the production. That's it. Who owns the production? That's it. Hmm. And so, we actually kind of kneecapped Adam very quickly early on because he, def- he, he set a definition of well, socialism. Socialism does do, to it. does do that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, it does do that, but that's not necessarily yeah. the only, and uh, that's not the only element of it. But by right. limiting it to that, he was able to control the discussion reasonably uh, no, easily. Normally, and when, and when, oh, sorry. when Adam came up with examples, when Adam came up exam with examples of where Vosh's uh, our socialism would fail, Vosh said, "Well, no, that's totalitarianism." And I'm I'm explicitly uh, I am casting it in this one yep. frame, and I think uh, Dr. Misha understands exactly where it went and why. I think Adam yep. had a hard time finding ground. Yeah, he's he's talking about social uh, democratic socialism, not yes. the more what, radical what, what, forms what, what, of what, socialism. What, well, yeah. What, 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 uh, out of curiosity, what would be the like point of talk yeah. what, of arguing for a radical of anything, capitalism or socialism? Well, if you have okay, so Dr. Griffith, so this, I not sure. something I know shit about, so I'm going to throw it out there and look stupid here, which is fine because I don't know crap about this stuff. Um, and I took economics <laughs> too, by the way. But it's, um, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but socialism you have obviously the the state has the production, also land land acquisition, right? There's no private. Mm -hmm. Can, can you own no. can you own land? In uh, no, yeah, no, you see, he he he, he no, but he caps that. Okay, is, okay, so, so uh, um. Let's see what some of the other things I'm thinking that generally falls under socialism. Um, uh, Nate, what's some other things that would be generally in the, under socialism? Then I don't go. How about for goods and productions? Okay, all right. Well, um, if you're talking about pre-Marxian socialism, you're talking about a system that was put in place by a handful of um, uh, do-gooding factory owners who are trying to do experiments in beneficial labor, in uh, having a good system for the workers. That's one type. That's the earliest type. Uh, Marx gets a hold of it and does something very different with it. And then when you start talking about anarchism, you start talking about something totally different. Um, the uh, state ownership of the means of production is kind of like a good basic starting point for socialism, but you really don't need to have state ownership of land. Um, you can, and, and, and all of these things are negotiable. That's what we keep, you know, people keep forgetting is that uh, the when they warn you of the slippery slope, well, yeah, it's a slippery slope, but we're smart enough to stop at some point. So, so socialism, uh, or as, as developed in Germany in the late 19th century, democratic socialism, uh, is a completely different animal. It's socialism that, uh, is brought about by gradual and legal means, more radical socialism. That's when you get the bomb throwing. That's when you get the revolutions, but that is a splinter group off of actual uh, democratic socialists. And I, yeah, I think he was, I think he was prepared to argue a much broader definition of, of socialism and Voss just had it, had it down. And every time he tried oh, yeah. to go to broader yeah. definitions uh, yeah. that we would understand, including sharing, sharing goods, sharing other things. He's like, that's not yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not talking about distributing yep. the wealth. I'm not talking about sharing the wealth. I'm not talking about oh, okay. sharing goods, nothing. Just yes. the production. Yes, uh, because because anyone who's taking the opposite position is going to say, "But Stalin," and or, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, already was, that was. So they're they're, they're, they're going down. Yeah. They're going down the the worst case scenario. So yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, type well, that's what, regime. Well, that's what my question was: is what would be the point of trying to argue for the extreme of capitalism or the extreme of socialism? You're not going to get anywhere. It's just both are going to be shit for everybody involved. So why mm -hmm. would we use a happy mix of both? Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it, but it sounds interesting. I just yeah, I'm I need to see it too. So, so I, I have a question Ooh. for for the historians. Um, mm, okay. and basically, it comes around, you know, how much of what we've had our history is inevitable or not. And here's the thing. Let's assume that we discover another intelligent civilization out there in the universe, right? That, that, mm -hmm. that's, e that's evolved independently. How, how, how likely is it to find that they've had similar historical events like the rise of socialism or capitalism or the feudal system? How, how much of that is inherent to a civilization and how much is unique to us? Ooh. That's an interesting that's an interesting take on it because you know the rise of of 
of civilization is basically the changeover from hunting and gathering to agriculture. Sure. Um, so that we don't need everybody out killing mastodons in order to eat. Once you get that change, yes. yeah, and then you get the specialization that comes in urbanization, and and that's a formative, um, a real formative moment. But I can't, I don't know how any other group would do it, I mean, really. Would, would you know, we... if you if you organized your if you organized your civilization like, say, dolphins, who don't need agriculture, who are never going to develop along that way, but may have developed some sort of an intelligence that we don't know anything about, um, you know, it might be that alien to us. How, how likely, for example, would this alien civilization have, let's say, concepts of religion? Is that sort of fundamental to intelligence? Or is that just a random thing that happened here? What's? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know either. Have, that's 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 yeah, yeah. This is this that's, is fascinating. That's a, that's a philosophical I would ass- question. So, yeah, uh, I would assume that. that that dogs have religion, their own religion. You know that that once you get a hierarchy, then you get religion. Hmm. So, Interesting. So I have some ideas on that. One of which is to say that all intelligences that we've seen that have evolved have evolved to deal with a particular environment and not evolve to deal with some kind of absolute truth or defined logic or whatever. And so I think that while cognitive biases may be different in different intelligent organisms, there's always going to be cognitive biases that you're going to see. There's always going to be some tendency towards illogical thinking, which might lead to things like wars or conflicts that could have been avoided. And um, as far as the economic thing goes, I also think that scarcity is a feature of the universe. It's not going away for any intelligent sure. civilization. So every civilization is going to have to come up with a way to distribute resources because there is not enough for everyone to have everything they want all of the time. There'll always be something scarce. Right. For something so value. Something scarce that has, has some utilitarian... Properties. Right. No. Basically, the economic definition for scarcity is anything that there isn't enough of for everyone to have exactly as much as they want immediately when they want it is scarce. But so air that... isn't scarce because I can get as much air as I want. But almost everything else is scarce in an economic sense. But you're, you're, you're assuming that they they have an economy to begin with. I mean, they might give just like a hive this thing. Is this... Well, even so, they would still have resources that they could they would like to have more of but simply don't. Yeah, just so, because they're a hive mind doesn't, right. doesn't negate the economics of food and space. Limited. Right, food and space are are scarce for ants and bees and mole rats and hypothetical hive mind aliens. But I think I think there's always going to be, for example, even though they may not have a person, uh, let's say a, a a tyrant named Napoleon Bonaparte, I suspect that intelligent civilizations go through periods of time where somebody comes up. And, and and place their ego and try to eventually mold the world to their their image. For example, I suspect that's probably a property of intelligence as opposed to a thing that just happens here on Earth. I'm 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 guessing, right? Well, yeah, you're putting, you're putting in are, that that ego is going to be a part of intelligence. Period. You're gonna, if you is have that, intelligence, that, you have sucky sucky whatever people, sucky entities, sucky aliens. But. But am I, really, I guess I'm really asking how much of what's happened in our history is just a property of of civilization and how much of it is a freak chance that it happened here. What's, well, here's another question, too, oh, is is what yeah. if you have an intelligence that develops elsewhere as more of a hive mind? Because then you but wouldn't have an issue to go. By the way, uh, Mikey snuck in and, and, and like Nikki said hi to him and I was going to, but I didn't get a chance to. Hi, Mikey. <laughs> hi, Mikey. Hey, Hello, team. everyone. How are you? Speaking of a hive mind, uh, I know. This, this, he comes in and goes, I hear and obey, <laughs> exterminate flat earthers. But seriously, it's, it's a matter of, again, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, is religion a, 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 a typical property of, talk, of an intelligent civilization? I, I think or is, you, or is as religion... long as you have curiosity and as long as you have imagination, oh, that's I would say yes. Solid, so. Or is it is religion an ad hoc? Is we, there certain yeah. things that people want, uh, especially powerful or ambitious people, and then they're oh. going to use religion as an afterthought? Oh yeah, religion. 
um, as a way to justify it. Well, the religion would have to exist first for them to be able to utilize it as a tool. So yeah. so the idea of, of using your imagination and your curiosity to create some kind of being to explain something you don't know is as long as there is curiosity and as long as there is uh, probably some kind of fear and as long as there is some kind of uh, like like an, a desire to figure things out and some kind of imagination to actually figure things out with, then I imagine that essentially a religion, would, there would be no choice, but it would have to show up as long as those factors. But, yeah. but then they would have to well, develop some kind of epistemology There's at least as one well. culture that's pretty much zero so, religion in it, um, even now. Um, they just don't have a supernatural concept. But, 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 but any, any, pretty much everybody else does. Any type of religious... I mean, any type of alien civilization seems to, to be, we're saying, has these fundamental things: economy, uh, epistemology, uh, which because you have to have epistemology, I believe. Well, that's why. Well, that's why um, I was saying as long science, as curiosity and imagination reasoning. exist, then they're and, like as long as the as long as whatever intelligence beings have. So, these would they learn logic? But, would they learn math? They develop it. I think to There's, be a civilization, is, they would have to. Yeah, there is a, there is a, I think uh, something you're leaving out is the intrinsic need to make sure the next generation knows how to do things. Ah. Education. Hey, okay. And we're, we're, I th yeah. think you can cloak that in many different ways. I think theater grows out of that, music grows out of that, dance Good grows point. out of that, language grows out of that. Just about anything you can think of. Because humans are pattern seekers, we want to extend that pattern to our kids because we love them. Um, and I think being able to pass on that knowledge, whether you call it religion or whatever you want to call it, is crucial. I mean, that's why um, if you look at, like, I think it's the, the, the Greek mythology, right? You have all the muses that sort of proceed over the different arts, dance, poetry, right? All, all your different arts. But the mother of the muses was the goddess of memory. Like the ability to be able to pass things on um, was intrinsically connected to the idea of development. And, of and, and recording something that someone else could could recite, right? Communication yeah. language. Properties of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I, I presume if, if we are if we are able to contact an intelligent civilization, by by one of the things is that we're going to get some kind of communication, some kind of language, and I presume that language comes some way for people to synchronize thoughts or, 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 or synchronize concepts. Um, the question is, would they have, would, would they find religion to be something totally bizarre or would they have the religion, but just, you know, different stuff? I think it might actually depend on how you end up defining religion at that point. If you're defining religion as some kind of supernatural, or if you're just defining it as, uh, as Dr. Uh, Griffith has said, where it's a little bit more broad of, of uh, culture and tradition and however you want to define it. But if you're talking about like, oh, well, mother nature, well, it depends. Do these aliens rely on whatever nature is around them? Because they might not. Well, every, every group is going to devise a methodology of training the next generation. Well, it depends on if they're social. They might not. Well, yeah, if they're not they social might be, like not that, be sociable. Social. Let me, I, I want to show you this. This is like my most prized possession. This is a Wintu Indian basket. Oh. Um, it was given to my grandmother uh, about, 100, about 100 years ago, mm. close to 100 years ago. So it's probably that old. <laughs> and the, the Wintus made their, ah, I got stuff in my nose. The Wintus made their baskets uh, to, a, to a degree that they could not only hold water, but boil water mm. in their baskets. Wow. Um, oh, that they're, Dr. they're Mason, tight. Your, uh, your, uh, your camera's off if you're trying to show something. Oh, is my camera off? No, it's not. Uh, we got uh, it. We got uh, it. Not, it's, okay. fine. it's fine. Oh, you're not going to so, get So, yeah, they, could, they would put water in this. It would hold water pretty well. And then they would put hot, wa hot <laughs> rocks in it and bring the water up to a very high temperature. Anyway, so these, like, were the most useful, important, items that the members of this tribe had and when they died they buried the baskets with the basket makers huh everybody in the tribe had to learn how to weave baskets and the baskets were all buried with the basket makers so i i have a question for you guys 
Why do you think they did I know this? the answer. I'm not going to answer, though, because I have watched the old, old, old non sequitur that you guys were on she, where you talked about she this. Told us, <laughs> she, saw, she saw this before. Oh, she's yeah. cheating. She's have I done? Cheating. Have I? Yeah, you've, have you've, I? You've, you've talked about this before. Oh, shoot. It, to be remember. fair, it was like a, it was, it was nine, probably ten months ago now at this point. At least. At I'll, least. I'll give it a stat, having not seen that episode. So mm-hmm. my, okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that if you let the baskets stay around with the people who are surviving these now dead basket makers, there is a chance that the ability to make new baskets will simply die out as a as a technique because it won't get passed on because there's no the need to pass it on. That is exactly right. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Two points. Is, nice. That, that is, is exactly right. I just but, want the internet. But, yeah, but that is that is one way to do it is to, to to pass on the education. So so that's why I am I am really adamant about have to pass on the information um, and have and have schemes to do that. Yeah, that's that's the hardest thing to pass. That, that's called tacit knowledge, knowledge yeah. that mm-hmm. we, we learn and things like that. That's probably the hardest thing to pass on because you can't just read a you can read a book to learn how to play something, but to know how to play something. <laughs> You can't get from a book. Yeah, and there are mm-hmm. crafting techniques that have gone extinct because no one, the, the number of people who knew how to do it just kept going down and down until the last person died. And now no one knows how certain things were made. Oh, yeah. We have ideas. But... I think that's going to get worse. I think because of technology, more and more people, that there's, there's less craftsmanship, there's less uh, people that have you know, in-depth skills, and I think as time progresses, people are going to not know how to do certain basic shit. They're going to be so reliant upon technology to do it that if that breaks down, they'll be like, what do we do? Uh, for, for a lot of things, yeah, it, it depends ultimately on if those things are important enough and whether or not those things are, are written down in un- good enough instruction manual but, but and even if, even if you, the ability to read. But, but, that's the thing with ta- but that's the thing with tacit knowledge, no matter if you can read or not. You have to have that yep. skill set. You have to learn it. You can't just read a book right, yeah, and get that knowledge. Right. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is whether or not we deem that, it, that that's important. Is it is it important to for, for people to be able to understand how to farm in case something goes wrong, or is it important for somebody to know how to make an iPhone if something goes wrong? iPhone. iPhone, yeah. Why? IPhone. Because the network's, not, the, 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 so, the, the network's not going to work. So, well, so if we all got thrown Would back... you rather be able to eat... Or would you rather be able to? Oh, with, I can I can live without food. It. Internet, the yeah, internet's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you. We, we got a super chat from. <laughs> internet is not. I, I can live off rice. We got, a, we got a super chat from. Right, but you need to be. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we got a super chat from Colossa for five thousand. Doctor Griffith, do you think there is a tendency of being ahistoric and anarchist and anar? I can't pronounce Anachronistic. it. Anarchistic. 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 Thank Anarchistic. you. When YouTube atheists slash activists discuss, discuss stuff like slavery. Ooh, that's interesting. Because um, for my students, you know, the, the, the question is, do we judge people of the past on their values or on our values? Uh, and what I tell my students, and I, and I hope this answers that question, is that What's more, most important is that to understand they did have different values than we do now. But it's okay to judge them. You're not going to hurt them. They're already dead. Um, but to understand that they are different people. And that's exciting. That's, that's fascinating about them. To get inside their heads and, and understand what they're doing. Um, as far as anachronism, I have, you know, I'm around recreators. They get real persnickety. Oh, well, that's the wrong type of bloody blah. Um, persnickety. And, and persnickety. <laughs> I, I have lots of old fashioned terms. <laughs> but it's but a persnickety is a perfect chrome in that word. So I like persnickety. I love it. <laughs> it's better than picayune. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, both. Well. So anyway, in your, in your but ears. but the but but to have a to to you know to get over interested in the details without le- without understanding the bigger context, you know, you can sit down with Civil War recreators. Most of them want to be 
the the Confederates anyway. And they're, you know, they've got the they've got the tent right, they've got the hard tack, they've got the uniform. But when you start talking about details about the history, they want to go back talking about the uniform and the tent and what it was like in the camps. And there's, you know, talking about this context is super important. Can, can I touch Did that, on that answer the question? Uh, can sure. I touch? Um, first, um, people, uh, somebody asked me if I'm going to have a Patreon hangout. I wasn't going to have one this month. I was busy with other stuff, so I, I made note of that. I might next weekend if you if they want. Um, by the way, I'm putting my Patreon link in the video description. If so any new ones, um, I I lost two Patreons because I wasn't going to cater to them. Um, one of which was a mod. My, uh, you guys remember him? Zero one three two one three two. Unfortunately, he I we couldn't see eye to eye, and I asked him oh. to please stop. Um, trying to run a narrative about all that medical stuff and he just wouldn't do it. And I just told him, I can't have you around. So uh, wish him the best, but, uh, that's too bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't understand it either. I mean, I've known zero one, three, two, one, three, two for a very long time, but I can't have that type of nonsense around. It's just, it's just not productive to the channel. And, and I hope he understands. Uh, but anyways, uh, well, I'll, I'll watch once everything's sorted. Yeah, and and that people might be will, true. yeah, you know, some people might come around and say, "Hey, sorry, I'm, I, I I'm going to have an amnesty type thing eventually." But after certain people come to meeting Jesus very quickly, um, there's going to be a, there's going to be a reckoning. I assure you, uh, there's going to be a come to meet Jesus moment. <laughs> but um, it, what we're talking about, um, I, I I understand there's descriptive moral relativism, and I accept descriptive moral relativism. I don't necessarily accept a cultural relativist approach, in that when we say uh, in that time. It was, you know, something like slavery was moral. I'm looking from my perspective, slavery was never moral. However, they were not aware of that moral fact. And so we can't, we, we can judge them by our own standard. I got no problem with that. Um, it's not a relative, it's not relativism. It's I, as an objective moral person, I have an objective fact of the matter to be held that says, okay, this is always wrong in this, in these cases, but they were just unaware of it, which doesn't make them bad people. Well, you right? judge them, you don't condemn them. Right. There's, there's, they have far less culpability than somebody hey. nowadays who should know that these things Mom. are wrong. There's Mom another is getting part. off, so we gotta say goodbye. Who? Goodbye. Who's leaving? M. Oh, M. Bye, M. Bye, whoever. Thank you for dropping by, M. We appreciate it. It was fun. Bye. And actually, I, I gotta get going pretty soon too, because I have stuff no that doubt. I need to get done. I know. I'm sorry. Um, I'll be off and on on like Twitter or Facebook or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and we, and we got to do a, a show next time. So yes, yeah. yeah. Um, Landon is going to be back on my channel because we have more to talk about. But um, before I go, I'll just show a couple things. Steve, you and I are going to be on with uh, Atheism versus Logic on the twentieth on my channel. Is that Yay. is that am I remembering that correctly? Yay. Yep. So that'll be. A I haven't watched his special. new. I haven't watched his new video yet, and I just saw the title, and I'm like. He's 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 got he's got some really weird ideas. <laughs> he does, but nice guy. He seems personable, and that's one of the reasons Very I was personal. like, oh, maybe. But um, yeah, that's fine. So originally it was gonna be a 500 subscriber special. I passed 750. Ooh. Now I'm at 830 something. Nice. So I'll I'll toss the link in the chat if you want to help me get it to a thousand before the 20th. Go subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, you know what we're gonna. I think what we're gonna do is not this month, but next month, um, or somewhere about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a bunch of channels together and just have one massive sub drive, and we're gonna. That'd be awesome. We're gonna go to yeah. other channels. We're gonna get all the channels we could possibly try to shout us out and get just people to come and subscribe, like you know, ten channels. But, but oh. definitely, people should should check out Dapper's channel. It's, yes. It's, 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 it's Absolutely. Good Were you going on Dapper's channel, Steve? I mean, I know he's interested in dinosaurs. Yeah. I, 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 oh, jeez. He's, he's got a thing for me. Yeah, I got a bone for yeah. you. Trust yeah. me, I, I, I definitely have a bone for you. Oh, I'm also doing a, uh, on the 25th, I'm have, hosting a debate after show for a YouTuber who's going to be debating Ken Hovind. So why are people still bothering with Kent? Even I have had enough of it's Kent. It's your fault, Steve. I know it's my fault. I take responsibility for that, but enough's enough. Kent is a bore. Kent is the most boring fucking person in a debate of all time. He has nothing ever new. It it makes no difference. Mm -hmm. And I know Tony Reid's going to debate him. Right? And, mm -hmm. and I Tony Reid already debated him. Oh, did he? Yeah, I watched it. When was this? Tony did pretty well. Except uh, I think it was yesterday. Okay, Tony I told has him some I was pretty watch serious it, not technical alive, but... problems. But after the technical problems, Tony did pretty well. Who, I how, think... how was the vote? 
he told he told me that there was going to be a vote on how many people switched their position, which I thought was kind of weird oh, because because Hovind I don't could think lie. I would have stuck around for that. Yeah, I don't know where you had the mm. vote. I have to ask him, but he he told me he was. I talked to Tony the other day about it. And I, I told will him say I, this. I think the point of debating Kent Hovind is to get him to make an admission that is embarrassing for him. Like in my debate, when he admitted he didn't know what a dinosaur is. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that was so he doesn't I don't know he doesn't know what the clade is. Please. No, he, I asked him how would you identify a dinosaur if you found oh, a skeleton? Yeah, how right. would you know it's a dinosaur? And his response was, "Hmm, well, that's interesting. I guess I would have to do some research oh, on that." Isn't well, he isn't he Dr. Oh, wait, isn't he Dr. Dino? He is uh, Dr. Dino uh, according hey, to him. Dr. Uh, Dino. <laughs> yes. um, and uh you'll uh, get uh, that goes straight to my cell phone. Wow. Yeah. Somebody uh, have to, uh, somebody's gonna have to get like a clip of all him admitting all of the things he's been wrong about every time he like every time he does. So there's like a clip show. How of would it you ever find all that data? Uh, well, I mean, I could do it, but I don't get paid to do that, so no. <laughs> I don't want to. What do, well, what, clip, what do you get paid the... for? I don't know. I did a smug. Mm, giggity. You guys want to go buy some swag? I did clip him admitting to not knowing how to identify a dinosaur on my channel so that's that's already done so yeah, there you go. that's that's part of the work but i do have to get going thanks yeah. a lot guys i had a lot of fun no, we're, we're gonna be what? we're gonna be wrapping gonna, this up i have a talk. patreon what do you even mean what do i get paid to do yeah, well i mean um, all right bye something, bye. Wow. something that me show bye was, dapper dr. love you dapper dr griffith was saying and what you were saying steve is that they they were different people at the at, at the time one of my favorite things about it, though, is if you look at old school graffiti from like Greece <laughs> and Pompeii, it still means it's still all it's just still bullshit. Stuff. It's yeah. still bullshit. It's still like this person was here and for a good time call this person. Like it's still, it's still we're the same. We're I the banged, same. I banged your mom here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hundreds of years, we're still just assholes. <laughs> Da Vinci's, Da Vinci's uh, uh, secretaries or students, they drew dicks inside of their notebooks. Like. Oh, hell yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and, and you should see what they put on the coronation chair, you know, during the queen, reign of Queen Elizabeth, the Crower Boys. There, there's, there's some stuff on are, there are you, that is. Are you saying people have been perverts for, like, throughout history? Yeah. Uh, Even during the Victorian issue, area, yes. <laughs> Um, one I thing I wanted to jump in on was with what Chess said with like, well, do you want to know how to farm or do you want to know how to build an iPhone? Well, if we make the iPhone, we could just order food on Uber Eats, Chess. I don't know yeah. if you see, thought about see, that. See, Chesh, Mikey gets it. Somebody, Mikey gets it. Thank God we have somebody who actually understands this shit. I'm just saying we could just if, order if, food. If, if idiocracy ever comes true, this man's going to be our president and leader. I, I oh, vote. Yeah, I vote. What are you talking about? Idiocracy is true right now. You have <laughs> God. I'm also, did you forget I'm... where you live, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> he, he... I'm leaving. You can leave. It's okay, Chesh. Please leave. Just call us on your iPhone. And you can just call right, come right in. It's not a problem. Listen, you think I I'm going to use a goddamn everything. iPhone, you are sadly mistaken. <laughs> I'll say yeah, I think the biggest saying. problem here is that we should probably not remember how to build iPhones and really like store a lot of data on how to build Android phones, Wait, does, because that's far more yeah, important. Does, I all, think, um, all I want to know is, does it have electrolytes or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody? It's got electrolytes? It's got electrolytes? It's got what do I what, does that, what does that mean? What's, I don't know, but it's got them. <laughs> It's what plants crave. It's what plants crave. Yeah. Why? why? <laughs> I don't know. What's, what's more important, knowing how to make tea or knowing how to make Gatorade? <laughs> yes. Both. What happens if people get so stupid they forget how to have sex? No, I don't. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. not. Yeah, possible. Have you? Have you? Need to remember wait, that. have you met some of flat earthers? Jellyfish know how to do that, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay, so jellyfish shit. are not as. You couldn't forget yeah. if you wanted. You can even flat earthers can. Jelly. I jellyfish might be spineless, not... but they're not brainless. Yeah, I can. Oh, I can. I, I guarantee it. Most flat, most flat earthers are very confused for the first flat fifteen Earth, twenty minutes. Aussie, flat Earth Aussie Whoa. Jesus has children. Well we, should, well, we should ask them how many sad. times they think they've brought a woman to orgasm and then call those women and ask God. them if they have, you know. 
You think, those, you think they got the right think. numbers? Do you think they want to be called? That sounds like a question for Alex. That sounds like a question for Alex Jones's wife. Super chats. Uh, S. Weingart said uh, for $2 US. Loud. Domino's. Alex Jones knows how to have the best sex. He's got ultra male like that. <laughs> Go ahead, Shush. S. Weingart for $2 US said Domino's can be ordered from a bash terminal. True. Uh, Kent Hovind's yeah. cellmate for two dollars US says, "You think Kent is boring? Let me tell <laughs> you." Dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they pray to good. pray to Jesus beforehand, though. You could do a lot from Bash Terminal. Just, just to let you know. You can have a lot of fun with a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can. Uh, I do. She's like. I'm hoping old you can, Nikki. Sorry. What? Parent emergency. Oh, you're back. Yay. Oh, Yay. Everybody stop talking about her. Oh, uh, oh. It, it was like, it was like, who's the new girl? I don't know. She left anyways. Okay, whatever. Okay, well. My parents are in India, so they get worried. She's not answering her phone. Why is she not answering her phone? Where are you? What were you doing? And you're like, oh, God. I enjoy that we have four women in here and none of them are on the screen. Nice. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Male patri- nice. What is the patriarchal this society? Is patriarchal <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Don't bring your don't bring your <laughs> misandering. Look, look, we're just don't, making sure that you're not on screen don't, purely don't, for your objectification. Don't don't bring false misogynism. Don't, don't bring your feminist misandering bullshit to my channel. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> I I can appreciate that Steve is working to objectify the men in this call. Thank you, yeah, Steve. Exactly. See? Yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. Everybody you should can't tell win, can you? Button, at least two of his buttons. I okay. I'm trying to try, I'm trying to be a little less heteronormative, and you guys are faulting me for it here. Yeah. No. Oh. So, so I mean, you oh. need to unbutton at least two of your buttons, Steve. Come if, on. If if you Quite took a, a survey of the intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. What are the average number of genders <gasps> you find per civilization? Oh, I, I, three. I, I, I like a t- I guess three. I guess, the answer three. All I know is I saw a shirt today that said there are more than two genders, and then when you go to buy one, there's only female and male listed to buy. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. wait, that's a serious question. Serious question. Well, well okay. yeah, yeah I, I assume then you then mean sex, me? not gender. Oh. Not right, that sex, Nikki. There's, there's, oh, no, sex but, is other, but, other, but other species can have more than two sexes. We're dimorphic. We have two sexes, yeah. but not oh, all species have two sexes. Like, well, yeah, but he said how many genders are there, so I think yeah. he meant how many sexes are there. Genders, huh. genders can be multiple different things. I'm, I'm reading the super. I'm, I'm reading the chat, and someone went, go to India. They have a lot of genders. I'm like... <laughs> I was reading a super chat and somebody voted. They were taking votes on who gets to na- get naked first, and they voted for Nick. That would I would be. Hey, I do what the fans want. Dave got. If, if Dave, we're gonna get super chats, I got. Dave got nauseous. He he literally got <laughs> nauseous from Dave, that. Dave was all... He got nauseous. Hey, he almost killed me. Shirt apart a yeah. little bit. Leg, leg off. Landon's already off the stream. He's just like he's bailing. I want. I want. I, I, I would love to go to I, I, India. I want to try actual Indian curry. That that, that would be my dream. Yeah, actual I love, Indian curry. Actual well, Indian curry. Some of the best curries. I love curries. I'm oh, a, some of the best I, curries you'll find are in London. I will London. stab you in the heart for what? a good curry. London? Some of the best curry houses you'll find are in really? London. Yes. Hmm. Is it because it's so close yeah, to your name? Good, I think that there's some good restaurants out there, yeah. Are they all run by immigrants? Yes. I've never been there, but I would... I, 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 all, all we ever had, we've had some Indian restaurants in, like, you know, shopping malls, which is actually not bad. Actually, they're pretty decent. Um, but I I'm, I love curries. I mean, that's... To me, ah. I could survive on that crap, man. Please don't do that. I'm get, I'm starting to get hungry now. <laughs> Make me food! Well, my, my, my favorite oh, thing Jesus, about Steve. going to... India would probably be how easy it is to get like all vegetarian cuisine. Oh yes, like, yeah, but I'm not, oh, yeah. so helpful. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I would eat yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'd be really good vegetarian Indian style, but I, I oh, definitely yeah. a beady. You should go to South oh, India. Most... 
the South thing India? is, it's like it's not it's not one versus the other, right? It's just there are now more options that are more vegetable based. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. There's yeah. an entire city um, in that area. I think it's uh, near Dubai. That's it's the entire city is um, either vegetarian or vegan, depending on some parts. Now, Dubai, Mumbai. 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 Uh, Mumbai. No, uh, Dubai. Yeah, Dubai. Sorry, Dubai. Uh, Dubai. 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 Uh, Dubai. Big, super fancy. No, I'm sorry. Dubai is by Bahrain. That's in the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. 2000 I can't think from of where it is. 2000 I think it's in from... Sa- Saudi Arabia. Israel, maybe. Dubai yeah, is real, maybe. I thought it was in India, but I, no, I don't know. No, no, it's in United. Maybe then you're talking about Mumbai, no? Mumb- Mumbai. Uh, du- Dubai is, is in the Middle East. Mumbai is in the Persian, uh, Persian Dubai, Dubai is in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, and it's... Bombay. Dubai is in uh, United Emirates. Yes, yeah, UAE. So, I'm said, sure there are many cities in the south that are like pure vegetarians. Um, you you won't it won't be hard for you to find. Even in North India, I'm very. Right. I'm but you can find decent vegetarian in the middle of the outback in Australia. Well, so, Mumbai you know. is the biggest city in India, isn't it? Or one of them? I think we got a super Not chat. I could biggest. be wrong. Oh, okay. Metropolitan cities. Yeah. I think Chesh has out. a super chat. I may be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I see it. What? Wasa for two thousand says shirts off, Nick. Uh, I don't, I'm not getting demonetized, <laughs> or or oh worse, um, arrested for. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going to get Steve demonetized. This is happening. I'm gonna... <laughs> this that might be right. worth it. I mean, maybe, but I'm not on the screen, so. Actually, you are. You 2000 W. Okay. We can. I can still see you. You're just really small. Really tiny in the corner. Yeah. No one will notice. You're so you're so small as it is, and now you've been reduced down to like an inch. <laughs> oh, I feel like this is an Ant Man analogy coming up now. <laughs> what, I, what I could do is I could put my picture over you. Now you can show whatever oh. you want to the rest ah, of us. There, we go. there you go. Oh my God! <laughs> Damn! Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Okay. So much hair. Oh. By the way, oh, yeah. by the way, Chesh, I do recommend. Oh, I do recommend. I do. Rec- I do recommend that one little hair. Just pluck that fucker, man. Oh uh, yeah, no, I meant to do that. I meant to do that earlier, but I forgot about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll put your well, shirt back on. She didn't know she was going to be on a live stream and just doing the. I mean, let's give uh, let's give her a break. Yeah, it's supposed to be prep work. Yeah. You never know. You have to be prepared at all times. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Something new? Uh, uh, we ran the gamut tonight. So we've, 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 we've had. It's, about it's, how it's, what, it's, you want something intelligent or unintelligent? Uh, I'm gone. I'm at two hours, so I'm wrapping it up. So I think we're becoming more unintelligent. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's just the United States. All right, so point. we're gonna we're gonna wrap up with Charizard. Butterfree is always better, no matter what. I don't care what anybody. Yeah, Butterfree. Butterfree is the guy. Yep. Digimon. What? Digimon is great. However, the, yes, the opening and a lot of it was ruined by four yeah. kids. Card captors had an am- down, card down, 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 down. and Dragon Ball Z both had amazing openings, even though they oh, were yeah. redone in English. Oh, you yeah. are all so welcome. John Rapp for five dollars uh, said uh, an oldie buddy goodie salad is what food eats. And uh, to wrap it up, what are we going to be doing? Well, tomorrow we're taking the day off, but uh, what are we doing Monday, Chesh? Oh, we've got uh, we got caffeine corner. We're going to be talking about all the dumb shit that's gone on this week. There's been a lot of dumb shit going on because there's always dumb shit going on. Go check out the is site of the shop. Podcast, you guys, that I can listen to you on, like, like I'm. I'm an I might do podcast eventually. <laughs> we're, we're not making any large decisions for like three or four more weeks. Um, okay. But what we're going to be doing is because I cannot please everybody. Just like having multiple women in my yeah. life, I've learned you can't please them all. Um, yeah, you it's have fun to trying. It really is. is. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Well, I'm Steve, only one Steve, person. Steve, Steve, start with pleasing that. one of them, well, Steve, what, that, and then just go from there. Well, no, this is what I usually do. I'm like, usually, I had it, you've got it. And I usually tag somebody in. You know? So, you know, like, take over for me. Probably, you know. Ah, Jesus. What? Fucking Christ, Nick. What, Nick? Go ahead, man. <laughs> he's polyamorous. I don't give a shit. He probably knows what the fuck he's doing. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna have a surrogate to, to jump in for me, I'm gonna take Nick. You know, go ahead. Have, you know. Okay. But uh, oh, I'm down for that. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's got some <laughs> mad skills. Um, join us for Caffeine Corner. Go buy yourself a smug and join in. Maybe soon enough there'll be one of my face too. We're gonna Ooh. we're gonna have some cool stuff on that, I think. Uh, but yeah, so the Caffeine Corner we're gonna be doing on Mondays. Uh, like I said, I've taken a step back. I can't deal with dumb for a while. 
a uh, couple weeks mm. more, but uh, we are going to be talking about stuff on Caffeine Corner. Some people like it, some people don't. My suggestion is, and I've lost Patreons, and, I, and I've told them uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, this is what I like to do. People like the Caffeine Corner, uh, whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why people have a thing against you, Chish, <laughs> but it's really weird. We, uh, oh, yeah, you, so essentially what we're, we're talking about, the, the mostly news within the community yeah. as well as, like, weird things that we've happened to notice. So, like, the other day we were talking about the gay conversion guy coming out as gay. And, and like, oh, Harry, Harry Potter, one, yeah. Harry Potter being banned in Nebraska schools for witchcraft. <laughs> so, for so, witchcraft, because what year is it? So we, it, people want to, I don't call that drama. She doesn't call it drama. We, we just call it stuff that's happening. So, if people want to watch right. that, it's that's community great. news. It's, it's community community news. Like, is yeah, anybody is surprised that the one who was leading the, the gay conversion therapy program came out no. as like? No, actually, he talked. Apparently, he was he had talked about his struggle with um, gay porn throughout his time there, which is why he thinks he got fired when he did. Mm. Don't yeah. die, uh, but then, don't God die, will Mike. take you. But then we'll gay send porn, you and huh? make you. Who would have thought that? Ooh. But then we'll Ooh, we'll have our science. shock shock. But then we'll have our sciencey shows and our philosophy shows um, after that. So I mean, on Thursdays or Fridays, we have Ask a Philosopher. Atlanta's is going to come joining us. I've got a nuclear person oh, coming cool. in. I've got, I mean, so we're, <laughs> we got stuff planned. Is just give us two or three weeks. But yes, every Monday we'll be doing Caffeine Corner. No, I apologize. Just, I apologize no. to the people who just say, "Well, this is turning into a drama thing." N well, no, it's not. It's that's not what it is. If you think it is, just don't watch it on Mondays. I don't. I, I really didn't understand why I lost a Patreon because I'm doing the same thing I've always done, and yet we've had this that on You're not Mondays for doing it with weeks. The right people. It was okay. weird. I, I just, I was like, okay. I'm not going to try to please everybody, so it's just the way it is. I That's do what I want. Idea. You guys do what you want. If it matches I up, then we're all happy. I did that with my friends, and I'm very happy. Yeah. You do what you want. Em. I'm a, yeah. Yeah. You. Do what you want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. Yeah. Believe, believe what you want as long as, you, as it corresponds with my beliefs, Em. That's it. <laughs> and, and you're philosophically correct. God damn right. And if you ever disagree <laughs> with Steve, you're blocked. Yeah. Yes. Damn right. Um but that's why he talks to any of us, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, and, and the other thing is, people said, people I said, I send legions of armies to go, um, like, comment on videos and stuff like that. I'm like, when the <laughs> frick did this ever happen? I, I've never asked anybody to do that. <laughs> but you had those legions of armies, and they Who could... Who has time to go... You dollar I, I, I have time, but not anymore. Should find... If, yeah, if I'm a command buddy, I'd be yeah. like, hey, can you float me a buck for Patreon? I'm not going to waste my time sending them... Go, 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 <laughs> comment some video. I don't give a shit with you comment on a video or not. <laughs> comment on my and own. That... Don't go comment on somebody else's. Comment on my own, I appreciate, because I like to read those. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, like Thanos, you know, with the sword, the double-edged sword, and just like... Go. <laughs> All right. Anyways, guys, this was fun for my Coke night. Uh, we picked out of like 200 some up. Good. Go get yourself a smug. Get a smug. I'm going to get a smug. Yeah. I will be already got one. a smug. I ordered it. It's on yes. its way. Well, I just say, um, um, by the way, I, I asked people check out uh, Milwaukee Atheists. Uh, they have the Atheist Sunday School. Uh, it starts at 11 uh, o'clock, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, they're going to actually get me on the show and force me to read a chapter of the Bible. It's good fun, uh, and uh, they they do some really interesting like scholarship. Them. So, yep. Milwaukee atheists, Lawrence, um, he's awesome. Abs and 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 they're 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 a bunch of amazing you know college I, folks that do. Wave good night. I'm on the uncard. 